Wow, that went live a lot faster. Hey guys! How's it going? What's it up? Wow, this delay is like non-existent today. This is sweet. Okay. Oh, we've got 4R8. <laughs> Who's excited? I'm excited. Okay, I just gotta quickly post this. Tell people that we live. We live right now. Done. Done, dilly, done, done. Okay. Cool. <laughs> hey, Kingsley! Domax, Doom! Vector! Leth! Wrecked! Hi. Alright, guys. So, um, and Gary, I saw you too, Louie. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing the same, like, sort of like creature sculpting that I normally do, except now we've got a bunch of these, uh, these new tools to use, which is pretty cool. Um, maybe, maybe we'll dive into some VDM uh, brush making. I think that would be pretty fun, just because I love VDMs. Like uh, that was that was one of my favorite things about uh, testing with this was uh, was using the VDMs for sure. Hey Kyle, what's up? So I'm a little bit I'm a little bit rusty with the new tools. So you guys are gonna be learning learning with me. It'll be great. It'll be good stuff. Hells yes. I'm so excited to use this though. Oh yeah, the Dynamesh sub projections is really cool too. Uh, so if anybody doesn't know about the Dynamesh sub projections, it basically preserves uh, any of your details uh, by distributing the um, the mesh a little bit better in a sense where like anything that's got sharp edges or angles, it would put a lot more um, density into rather than uh, the rest of it, just kind of like an overall spread. I said VDM, okay, I'm VDM. <laughs> hey Sparky, hey Reggie! Alright guys, so... So we're gonna, we're gonna start the way we, uh, maybe, maybe we can, we can try, we can try doing this with, uh, with some deformers first, just to have some fun. Because <laughs> you know, you know me and my uh, my shapes. So we can we can try doing like maybe uh, do, do, do. we can try a bend curve. Da, da, da. Let's get this symmetrical. Whoop. Symmetrical, yes. So with with these, this is pretty cool. I, I guess you can't really see it with the the sphere. Again, this is gonna be me just like kind of pushing and pulling things around a whole bunch, trying to play with stuff. Should I always start with a cube? No. <laughs> hey, Link. Yeah. So if you guys want me to like touch on something specifically, like I can try and like dive into that as well. Because like in terms of like my workflow, I haven't I haven't fully integrated all of this yet. So uh, with with this sort of a thing, like I'm just I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna be playing. I'm just gonna be playing. Whoop! My hotkey isn't working. What's going on? No. Oh man, I gotta reset my hotkeys. Okay. Huh, interesting. Okay, one sec. So my hotkeys, the way what I what I normally do is I go through and I set from one one to zero as uh, my hotkeys. So I'm just gonna go through and put on everything that I normally do. So that would be 
Play build up as one. Hey, 3D Alliance, how's it going? Josh, what's up? Hey, Ollie. You wanna see some VDMs? All right, yeah, no problem. Oh, okay, okay, I see what's going on. It's because this is still, this is still active. Back. All right, this is cray cray right now. Hold on, guys. I'm having I'm having like a little bit of an issue because because it's my stream, like well, it's ZBrush's stream, but because I'm the presenter, obviously. Yeah, one sec. Give me one sec. <laughs> thing, 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 thing. We're good. Tentacles. A version of ZBrush. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's it's the it's it's that it's that new one. You know, you you heard of it, the uh, the one with the Z's and the and the X's and the Y's. <laughs> no, it's for our eight. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where my my hotkeys are. What's going on? Huh. Okay, so my hotkeys disappeared. No, nothing's blowing up. I think I, I, I didn't transfer my hotkeys properly and they're not uh they're not showing up right now. So I'm just going through and trying to get my hotkeys for my brushes to work, otherwise I'm gonna be going into this menu a whole bunch. Which I mean we could totally do, but I think that this would be uh, better for everybody. <laughs> okay, better idea. Customize the gizmo, will it be tentacles? No, it won't, it will not. Uh, maybe, maybe actually, I might do that eventually, but for right now, I'm having, I'm having a little bit of an issue with my hockey, so I will ask about that afterwards. Yeah, I did. So the, the weird thing is, like, even right now, when I am, um, assigning a hotkey, like, let's say I go control, alt, and then press on snake hook, it's up in the corner saying, press any key combination to assign custom hotkey, etc. Normally, I put on four, and it says that it's already assigned to this interface item, but if I go and select something else, and then I click four. Oh, now it's going. It's fine now. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so you have to go through it verbally sometimes. There we go. There we go. It's working now. Okay, we're good. Because it's my segment, of course this is going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, so that's 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 interesting. Two and then for I usually put H polish on my three brush. H polish do 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 is 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 is. Whoop. Where's H polish? Two H polish is on three, two three four. There we go. These are working. And then I put inflate on my five, five, mm -mm -mm -mm. inflate. Okay, so we're we're gonna we're gonna go through um, making making some VDMs, I guess. Why not? Let's do that. Let's open up the VDM. Feet medium. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, sorry, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy um, right at the start here for me, just because like I'm getting I'm getting back into the whole thing again, and uh, I literally just installed it, so we're gonna have some fun with that. Oh boy. Hey guys, where's the where's the VDM thing again? Do you guys remember where the VDM project is? Bump map edition. <laughs> yeah. All right. Projects. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't remember. In miscellaneous. Ah, oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me see. One second. So, with the <laughs> the installation, I should have this open actually. Yes, we're in the light box, Zomax. Tell me, tell me where it is again. I'm very r rusty. Misc. <laughs> Brush palette. Okay. Right. Right, 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 right. Is it these? No, 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 no. Okay, so I wanted to I wanted to show them how to make the, the VDM. So I totally forgot where to like grab that. But these are, there's a lot of like new brushes here too for you guys if you haven't actually like seen all of that kind of stuff as well. Sure. Rematch. Mesh maker brush? No. Thick plane. Should be, it should be a project. Miscellaneous. Yeah, okay, sorry. I totally glazed over that. Okay, so. There's a whole bunch of these right in here, so if you want to make a 3D template, or you just you grab this one, it'll give you this prompt because you're changing your project, say yes, or, or if you want to save your project, I say no, sorry, my bad. And then, uh, and then you have this plane, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna have the floor grid as well to show you what's going on, and there's, there's a, there's a, there's like a, a right side to be sculpting on this, and then not like, you know, the inverse side as well, so um when you have your plane one thing about vdms so do you guys want do you guys want to make uh, a bunch of teeth first i guess we can make like some teeth because that's pretty straightforward um so one thing about vdms is you got to make sure that the edge part stays completely completely straight like completely like a square that's uh that's one thing that i had to learn the, the hard way um but there is there is a way of doing that as well. I'm going to get my documentation so I don't completely screw this up for you guys. One second. You guys can put down some suggestions of stuff that you want me to make into VDMs and we can just have fun sculpting. <laughs> Here we go. Got that there. Okay. Hey Marshall, how's it going? All right, so with VDMs, you guys, I'm sure you guys know, you can actually just like pull things out really far, kind of like this. You can start at the highest, highest plane. You can have, or the highest subdivision if you want or you can start really low so in your geometry tab when you when you load this oh i loaded the wrong tool i loaded the did i load the wrong tool hold up i must have loaded the wrong tool i am i'm off to a great start such a good start there it is this is the one. Okay, so the one that you're supposed to load is not the one at the bottom. It is the brush 3D template. 
<laughs> hey guys, I've used ZBrush 4R8 before. Okay, so you, you, <laughs> you load that one. And basically you're gonna have a project that's going to show up and you're gonna have subdivisions from zero, like from one all the way up to nine. So you can start on any one of those to start sculpting your VDM, but I would recommend you start from the lowest just to start getting your shape going. Because as you go, you need to make sure that you have enough space around the edges so that you have, uh, it, it stays square. Basically, you need to make sure that this stays square. Um, because if you don't have that staying square, it's not going to register properly as a VDM. You won't be able to make it. And it will also, if you have things right here that are like, you know, higher, like, so let's say, for example, I decided to pull that like that. You shouldn't have this because then when you're pulling your brush onto the actual um, onto the actual model that whatever it is you're sculpting, if you're doing that, then you're gonna have this displaced, right? So this would be the average, this point and this point, and then this is high up. So then you would see like this really sharp edge, and you don't really you don't want that. So you want all of this to be as as sharp as possible, as square as possible. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. One second. I gotta pull something up. Another thing that I really enjoy is the uh, the constant stroke, which I will show you guys as well. And one second. I'm off to like the best start ever. I mean, I guess somebody had to be the guinea pig. <laughs> Alright. Oh, insect legs is a great idea. Yeah, I'll do that after teeth. We'll do some teeth first. As cube as possible, as, as square as possible, as planar as possible. Okay, okay. Okay, so there's also this thing, okay, so I, I got this all up already to cry a river <laughs> I know I'm 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 ridiculous okay so let's let's I'm gonna pump it to three and we've got symmetry on I'm gonna start sculpting in symmetry and then I'm gonna break it so you can start taking this out and see how big you kind of want like we're gonna make a tooth here so I'm gonna say something like this kind of taper it right like that get some uh, some of the bottom gummy stuff as well and then we're gonna keep like going up in sub D in order to keep getting more detail and more shape so you can see that I'm starting to do like this like kind of like nonsense over here so if you wanted to fix that um, in order to fix that you just kind of like mask it off mask off the sides Right? And then in your deformations tab, let me turn the music down just a little bit so I don't have to be screaming. In your deformations tab, what you can do is in the inverse, make sure that everything that you want to uh, have morph to a grid here is not masked. And then you just use this slider right here to morph to grid and it'll go and snap back right back into a square shape. And that'll mean that'll make sure that you actually have everything sort of like, you know, maintained to the square. And you can see that this is gonna be pulled up a little bit, so we're gonna have like some issues here. So we can also select this stuff again and try a relax on the other, the other one, just a relax function so that it's more gradual as well. So that's another thing that you're you're gonna want to try and do um, so really like the more space that you can leave here the better it will minimize um, any sort of like bumps that you get with your VDMs yeah so and then we're gonna go up again and this is pulling we, we can fix that in a second the same way that I showed you Okay. 
So this one I'm gonna make more like a sort of like bang. Negative Z as well with these brushes. Yes, you can, so I, I uh, yeah, you can totally do that. You can sculpt inside or outside. It really, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's going to displace both positive and negative, so it's totally fine. On the top level when it's flat is good too. Yeah, you could you can do that. That's actually a really good point Polysculpture just made is you can um, set a morph target when everything is flat so that you can make sure like you can you can get it back to where it was as well. Vector displacement mesh. So VDM stands for vector displacement mesh. Alright. And I'm gonna put on I didn't get a chance to customize my UI fully yet either. <laughs> so I, I, I always put on my back face mask with clay buildup so that I don't like uh, get any like really thin pieces when I'm sculpting with it. And this I'm just gonna change right up here. I'm gonna change the, uh, the material so we can see this better. Because it comes with a default of like a gray and stuff so I'm just gonna make sure that we have like all of our shape looking fine up in here all up in here and then we're gonna take all of this as much of it as possible and then like smooth everything out afterwards and uh, whoops wrong way and then uh, morph it to grid so you can see that this stuff just kind of like stretches out but that's okay because you can just like Smooth it out. So this one, this one's a, this one's got a big, a big base sort of a thing. Uh, sculpting BDM is it a good idea to use backface masking? Well, yeah, like it doesn't. So I, I just use it because if I were sculpting right here, for example, um, it, it doesn't necessarily matter if you're sculpting and have don't have backface masking on for this. If you want it to, you know, go inwards or whatever, it doesn't really matter um, because it is just one plane. Like, I just took it off, so if I do this, it's not like... It, it's just going to be pulling this anyways, as you can see. But if you have it on, like, you know, for, for here, though, that makes a difference, right? Because then it's going to be pulling on the other side as well. That's why I kind of just turn it on so that I don't have to really, like, you know, think about it. If I put it here, it's the exact same thing as back face or no back face because it is just one, it's just one plane, right? Like, it would be different if it had like, uh, it would be different if it had, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, two, two, like it was double-sided. So we're gonna get all like that gummy stuff in here. Gummy stuff. Uh, our 4R7 ZTL file, yes, absolutely. Hula, you can open up 4R7 files with 4R8, but I don't believe that you can open up 4R8 files in 4R7. So just make sure that you're doing the full upgrade before you uh, save out your 4R8 files and you're all like, oh my gosh, I can't open. In which case, you can always export as OBJs or whatever, but just, to, just so you can save yourself that headache. <laughs> no, Link Link has basic like uh, mod privileges though without actually being a full mod. He's got like the regular privileges. Feels exactly the same to sculpt. It is it is nice. Red wax emo oh, oh, oh no, please don't do that to me. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get, get all this stuff in here. And the cool thing is too, is you don't have to worry about, whoa, this got really loud. So 
So the the, uh, the cool thing is you don't have to worry about it being like, you know, if you're, you were sculpting something for an alpha, like getting, like losing all of your details underneath is because this is, this is displacing in every axis. So it's, it's going to be able to get this overhang. It's going to be able to get any of like this, like, you know, crevice kind of detail. So I'm just getting in like some base, base details before I go in and like break symmetry and I start getting real cray cray. And another thing too is you can use VDMs on these VDMs. So if you really want to do, you could sculpt this using another VDM. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it is just one plane and you're just kind of pulling that plane up in different, uh, you know, ways to create whatever it is that you want. VDM, VDM, VDM. <laughs> Can we get a VDM counter? No, I'm, I'm kidding. Hey Doug, how's it going? Yeah, the Pixelogic guys have been super on top of this stuff. It's uh, it's been an amazing, an amazing rollout. It's it's a super great uh, update to this program. Are there new Mac? There there are new materials in here. There's things like Droplet. Um, and green metallic as well. Like there's some there's some new new materials that you can play around with in here. They've got gold. This is new. Um, let's see what else do you guys have? I think you had the chrome before. But yeah, there's like there's a there's a few a few new things. I've got I've got some of the uh, Glauco Longi materials in here that I had before. But yeah, there's a few there's a few new few new ones. That you can play around with. Some scripts <laughs> VDM to create VDMs from videos for infinite brushes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh guys. The kit bash shelf. Yeah, it is. And that's a that's something that happens with the the uh, here, get ready. The VDMs again. That's a, so when you get these brushes all done and ready, they will be, like when you create them, they're up in a, in a shelf as well. I think I've got, uh, yeah, I got, I got some of the stuff, like these, I don't, I didn't get all of the brushes. I forgot to save out a lot of the brushes that I worked on, uh, when I was, um, doing the beta, but these are, these, these are so fast to do and you get so much like detail out of them as well uh i can i can show you some examples of some of the stuff like you know just <laughs> the very few things that i was able to actually save out because i i'm i'm, I'm spaced i'm spaced I'll be the first one to admit that <laughs> so you got to make sure that you have enough uh topology right but y you can see that you can get uh some pretty cool stuff like you get some scales just like that. So when I created the that dragon sort of like mech dragon thing, I was using this a whole bunch and uh, these other scales as well, which work a little bit better at a smaller, a little bit better smaller because I kind of made these like really fast. So I wasn't like here. Here's an example of what I was talking about. So if you're not if you're not um, if you're not looking at like, you know, the, the plane as like getting as much space near those sides as possible and you're doing this like really messy, you're going to you're going to get it looking like this. Right. Like that's just that's just what's going to happen. So you're, you're going to want to make sure that your your plane is nice and straight. But yeah, this is like some more really basic shapes, but you can do so much with this, right? Like you can, you can turn this into a spray and maybe not that much, but go, go into your stroke. And here, if you, there's a, there's this thing called pl placement and flow, which you can play around with. So if your placement is really low, then they're placed really close together. If your placement is super high, then they're spaced out a lot more. So you can play around with that a little bit more and then flow, you turn that like down, you get more, more spacing. The, the, the placement, sorry, is randomization. The flow is the uh, spacing between them. So you think of it like as like a, like a brush brush 
a brush 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 do like 0 0.01 you can get like you know so you can get like a whole bunch of like spikes really fast sort of a thing right <laughs> Once you upgrade to 408, does that mean 407 will not work anymore? Well, yeah, because you're going to be using the same license. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Uh, double check with the other guys, but I think I think because you because it takes the same uh, CD key that you can't use it anymore. <laughs> Pixel rolled it out like a 4R8 train. Hell yeah, that was lit. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, so and I also made like a, a broken version as well. So remember with all of these, you can actually go into a negative and you can see that it like, you know, it takes the same VDM. So if you're pressing alt and then you're going in, it will, it will just push it in as well. So you can get a whole bunch of like, I use this as like, I use this as like kind of like a, a hole creator as well when I was doing it, like really fast little holes. <laughs> Can it run crisis? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can make bite marks, that's a good point. That and then these this is kind of like a this I used as sort of like a texture, but it like has like this ricey sort of like larva effect as well so i you know either way you can get that as like scales or you can get it uh as uh as something else if you really want hold on put this as two no yeah so you could get some like really crazy things with like the roll as well some neat uh patterns and stuff so that's that's some some of the other things that I had uh, been playing with. I don't have all my brushes though, so we're gonna remake some. <laughs> all right. Whoops. <laughs> Ricey. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> How long did it take you guys from being new to sculpting ZBrush to having a general understanding? Um, <laughs> the random line bug is still- I think that's a Wacom thing, to be honest, because I get that in Photoshop as well. I don't know- I don't know if it's, uh, if it's ZBrush. Is it ZBrush? I think- I think it's, uh... Like, I, I don't know. I get that in, um, in Photoshop, too. Oh, yeah, the question. Sorry. See, see what I mean by I'm, like, just spaced? I'm just, like, I'm not on Earth at all. So, um, in terms of, like, getting a general understanding, uh, really, like, if you sit down with the tool and you, there's so many, like, there's so much on ZBrush um, uh, Z Classroom right now that you can you can learn the UI really fast. So I'd say you know in a week you could get a feel for the program, and in a month you could get a really good understanding of sculpting. But then it comes down to actually like just a lot of practice to get really really like you know good. Just get really good at what you're uh, what you sculpt. <laughs> Nobody ever excused me of being on Earth, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Kyle's gotcha. Yeah, I think it's Kyle- uh, <laughs> I think it's Kyle doing the line bug, no. Um, it's, uh... Yeah, it's probably Wacom. You're probably right. So I'm- I'm- I'm just like, I'm taking advantage of the fact that this is vector displaced in order to push in there and get overhangs and stuff like that. 
We're gonna get some... So with this, I actually, I want to take uh, a second to look at the chisel brush as well, which is, um, which is what you're gonna, you're gonna want to, oh, this is the chisel 3D. This is what you're gonna want to append your stuff to is a chisel brush, but the chisel brush, I love this so much. So these, this is like using, using like a real, um, you know, nib or something like that on your, on your sculpt so you can see how clean this gets so if I up res this a little bit more you can see how clean that gets and the, there's like a whole bunch of different shapes so you could always just make your own as well but it just gets so clean and what I like even more like uh, in terms of something organic like this you don't necessarily need it unless you're carving in like certain kinds of patterns and stuff like that but what I really really enjoy is uh, over in the morph target. So you, you got to make a mor store a morph target for this to work. And then in stroke, in the lazy mu uh, mouse, there's a lazy radius and a lazy snap as well. So this continuous stroke, if you're kind of drawing, and then you see how it just snapped there, and it's just continuing that stroke. And I freaking love that. I love it so much. It's so, so useful for so many things. And just like being able to hold shift and then release and then it makes your line for you as well has been like has been like amazing like this is so cool so i i think that's probably this that in vdms is probably like my favorite uh my favorite parts of this like i totally love the booleans too don't get me wrong but i just like like this this stuff though this stuff uh it's so good. Okay, sorry. Well, I had to. I had to do a little bit of like a fan. I had to do a little bit of a fan girl, cause uh, cause I I messed up so bad at the beginning of this stream. <laughs> okay. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you can use booleans for VDM because. Now, I don't know if I'm talking out of my butthole here, but I don't think that you can use uh, booleans for VDM because it's going to change um, the, like, we've got subdivision levels and junk like that. So when you export it, like, you'd have to technically make a new mesh to make the brush, right? Like, you'd have to consolidate the, um, the booleans into an actual, like, mesh. I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, we could try, we could try it, but I don't, I don't think it's going to work, right? Like, I don't think you can make, let's get that selected right now. I'm pretty sure that's something that they said that would not work. <laughs> no, you guys know I'm going to, like, I'm going to frig, frig, frig this up a whole bunch, because I'm also learning, even though I did get a chance. I got a brief a brief chance to uh, work on the beta, but I didn't get, I didn't get like a lot of time just because of my personal, personal life. But, <laughs> but it was super fun while I could. Hey, Ganon, save. Yeah, I guess we'll save. <laughs> okay, I'll save this as like a. Hmm. Eight brushes. There we go. Yep. So. Oh, oh, oh! I don't have my. Uh, this is what I mean. I didn't get to set my my. Dang it! I didn't get to set it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this. Okay, I'm gonna put that as like a uh, thing. Let's get that. Let's get let's get this out here. Yeah. There we go. That's good. That's good. Put it in your UI. Done. Save that UI. Save it. <laughs> A cubed UI 2.0. Saving the UI. Storing configuration. Hey, Yasin. How's it going? Hey, Snickers. Yes, I am using 4R8. We're learning 4R8 together. <laughs> yeah, so I put it in my UI because for God knows why I don't have it in my UI. Probably because I didn't get to set it up yet. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna 
I'm just gonna try this with just like a box right now. Ooh, that gizmo. Thank goodness. I'm gonna put that maybe right here. I honestly, like this, I really, like, I highly doubt this is gonna work at all, just because... So, you're saying, now, the only way that we could make this a... Yeah, this isn't gonna work, because it's gonna just take this one thing. Like, you can't... So, basically, you can't use booleans with, uh... To make a VDM right now. The reason, the reason being that is because you need to take this one plane, and this one plane is going to turn into... Um, a brush and this specifically ooh, no we don't want start we don't we don't want you to start <laughs> so this is uh, this is a separate sub tool and it's not going to record that at all yeah we're doing some vector displacement right now but yeah it's not it's not going to uh, it's not going to record that Ho hum. But like I said before, you can use other VDMs on on this as well in case in case you want to VDM your VDM brush. You can VDM your VDM brush. A hey. because really it is it's just it's just pulling things, so you could do that if you really want to. Make it into Geo then VDM. But T Marshall, the thing is it needs to read it needs to read uh, subdivision one through nine. So the problem with making it geo is it's not going to be reading all of that. It's not gonna be able to create the brush from my understanding of it. <laughs> no. All right, let's go. Let's go back to this. Let's turn this lazy mouse down just a wee bit because that is, that is super lazy. You get some really intense lines in here. And just kind of soften it out up here. Actually, maybe we can... What would it be like if I spray the chisel? Ooh! That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can get some cool little bumpies. And it, what's really neat is like all of that would totally show up too. You could play with the Z intensity, get that, like all of that would show up, which is really, really neat. Again, like this is an experiment stream. If you have questions, please ask. <laughs> I will answer it best I can. Heard you like VDM, so I VDM'd your VDM. Oh, thanks. Use curve stroke with VDM. Um. If it's if it's going to be a separate sub tool, no, you can't. If it's going to be a separate mesh from this uh, from this plane, no, you can't. It has to be part of this mesh. Like you can't you can't append like a sphere. You can't Im IMM a sphere or whatever. It has to be this mesh. You can't dynamesh it. It's got to be one right here all the way through nine. That's what it has to be. Oh no, why, what did you ask? I'm sorry. Marshall, did I miss your, your question? Thank you, Metal. Hey, Kristoff, how's it going? Okay, that's still on spray. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of... This is not going to be perfect because I'm just going to be just layering it like crazy and eventually it'll look good sort of a thing. I'm just going to get like the bigger groves of a tooth first. And then I will come in, smooth it out just a wee bit. Do 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 do! I wanted to make sure that this was nice and pointy, just to really 
drive home that sharp tooth look. Oh, you're good? Okay. Alright. Glad you're good. Sorry, if you if you really, really, really need to get my attention and I'm just like not seeing what you're saying, please just like tag my name because there's 200 of you in here right now. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Hey guys. So yeah, I'm just gonna be getting, getting in some of these like holes right here. Yeah, so Snorl, right now we're gonna be making a, uh, like a quick, we're gonna be making a whole bunch of, like, quick, uh, vector displacements, seeing, like, how big we can make this, uh, this little library thing going on here. Playing around with the new tools. Just having fun, answering questions, that kind of a thing. If you guys are curious to see what it was that I was able to sketch up on the beta, let me know and I will pull it up. If not, if you want me to just kind of show you guys this stuff and say screw it to the rest of the things, then I will keep going on this only. But tonight's a very like, hey, what do you guys want kind of night. Alright, so now I've got all of this going on right here. And what I'm going to do with this Oh, thanks, Lou. You know what? How about this, guys? How about after I'm done all of these, I will make these available to you guys after you guys can have the stream as like a big like, thanks! I will give you guys my VDMs. <laughs> Too fast bikini. <laughs> How to start one of these? We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of them, Ganon, so you'll be able to see it. Why, uh, it, yes, the outer edge of the plane needs to remain flat, if so, why is there not a mask on it to prevent it from being moved? Um, because some, sometimes I like to mask other parts of these things. Right now I'm not, but like, you know, you can, you can mask part of your, uh, like whatever it is that you're doing. So for example, like, let's, let's just, let's just do this. I'll show you. I'll show you before I start putting some alphas all over this because, <laughs> hey bro, I heard you like alphas. So. Actually, there's there's another way to mask things now as well, which I'll show you guys in a second, which is really, really cool. I still have to get used to it, though, because I'm so used to just, like, masking or whatever. So I, I like to just mask stuff and push stuff around as well, so I don't have everything masked off right now. Um, but you can totally mask stuff off if that makes your life a little bit easier. That's not like that's not really what I want to do. Um, and also, if you want to fix the plane, because like right now this is not by any means 100%. Uh, this is not 
what's it called? Hold on. Actually, I'll show you. So if you if you hold, um, sorry, you you saw what just happened there. So if you hold Control Alt and then drag your mask, it will have everything else masked off other than what you're, uh, I guess, selecting, right? So when I do that, instead of unselecting that area, it's keeping that unselected area and then masking everything off. So that's actually a difference. Uh, they changed the masking, which is really, I got to get used to that because that's still, I'm like, oh man, like that's, that's, that's actually super useful, but I totally, I totally forget that that's a thing. Yeah, so anyway, so this is how you flatten the outside of the plane. I can show you that right now. For those of you who missed it, in deformation, there's this thing right here called morph to grid. So make sure that all of all of what you want to preserve is masked. And the more space that you have here, the better. But uh, I know that a lot, not every VDM is going to be able to like be maintained to the very center of it. So just try and make sure that there's as much space as possible. And then you morph it to the grid. And you're going to get this because this is flattening all the way around. And then after that, you can just kind of get in there and soften it up a little bit but don't try not to soften it too much because um you're yeah like i said like you're gonna you're gonna kind of like warp the outside area and then that'll be a little bit of a problem <laughs> uncovered yeah from ontario too that's sweet <laughs> oh my god, Jordan, please. <laughs> Mess with topology of the medium, or does the structure have to stay grid-like? Yeah, it has to stay grid-like. You have to stay... Wow, yeah, this... I'm going to be repeating that a lot. Um, Because, yeah, that that's a big, big uh, thing, is this has to stay a square in order for this to work. Like, it has to be a square. And this... You can't... You cannot... You, you cannot go outside of these uh, subdivisions. Like, you have to stay within that... Um, that you have to stay within the subdivisions like you can't you can't dynamesh it you can't do any of that like you could take another uh thing and reproject it onto here but you can't really uh can't really dynamesh it or anything all right so let's get some alphas let's see let's get some like spotties actually do I, did i did i bring my alphas over from forest i did look at that oh Okay. So we can get some, uh, we can get some crusty things going on here. Let's get some of this. Let's get... Ooh, I loaded that too many times. Let's make that a, uh, make an alpha. Alright. Actually, I don't want that on here. Let's grab my standard brush. Go to, I don't know, I guess drag. And start playing with that as well. Turn the Z intensity down a little bit, because reasons. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then with that. monster pack <laughs> I'll be yeah I'll be giving away the uh, the videos that I make on stream today what if you sculpt on the edges because you're edgy well you're gonna have to make sure that <laughs> you're not gonna want to sculpt on the edges honestly you're not gonna want to sculpt on these edges you want to keep it as, as square as possible well you want to keep it exactly as a square that's the thing do VDMs save color data I don't think so Can you add geometry HD to area of VDM? Oh, geez, I don't, I don't know. I have not tried that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we can try. I feel like, it, I feel like we might break it though. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> No, you don't, no, 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 you don't have to be at the topmost subdivision level, but, 
Um, you want to make sure that every sub like you know the topmost subdivision level is what you want your uh, your VDM to look like. Otherwise, it's not going to be that. Okay, let's. I'm gonna go into masking right now. Mask by cavity. Oops. Oh. Maybe. Ooh, there we go. There it is. So with this, I'm gonna take my gizmo, my trusty gizmo, and we can just kind of sink that in a little bit to really, really push out those details. Hoorah! What up? Get it! Get it, boy! So now we have this. So just gotta make sure that the the like everything is kind of like working though, like at the, at the tipmost point of this. Uh, thing and it's not intersecting with itself otherwise you're gonna have some errors when you pull it out I'm gonna do like a minor smooth on some of this just to relax some of this, uh, this stuff here make sure that it's not going to be intersecting with itself because you don't want too much intersection and then add a little bit more a little bit more green to the very, very tip area, or the very base area right here. Save! You guys are like, please save, I want these! <laughs> okay. Oh man. <laughs> Alright, so... So, yeah, so I, I keep putting symmetry back on just because like I want to get this done kind of like quickly, but yeah, I can take, I can take symmetry off. Um, we can grab some... Um, <laughs> Let's try out some of the new uh, kind of the the new chisely brushes. We can use like maybe what's the chisel rectangle? I'm 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 actually curious to see if maybe I can get some crazy results with like using gears and stuff that you wouldn't normally use. We can we can play around with it and do some some of this sort of thing. Let's see the lazy mouse turn that off. Yeah, see, look at that. Like, even with this hard surface stuff, you can start getting some, like, interesting... Some interesting stuff. Ooh. Do I have this masked off by any way? I don't. What's going on? <gasps> What's happening? Huh. Oh, I know why. It's because I have... Where is it? Oh, I have the place... Yeah, I've got low, like stupid low. Okay. That's why. <laughs> Spike yet. Chisely brushes! Yeah, there's chisel brushes! So if you don't know, uh, Pixlogix has provided you guys with a little bit of a kit bash. Uh, to start off. So there's all of these sort of um, VDM brushes right here. So you can use gears um, and sort of like rivets and <laughs> that, that sort of a thing. And they've kind of like provided that and that's called chisel rectangle. They have provided chisel creatures. So there's some like, there's like ears and noses and stuff like that that you can, uh, that you can pull out here. Like you just have like a nose or uh, some some other spikes or horns and stuff like that, right? Like that's uh, that's some more of the stuff that they've provided as well. So this is this is pretty cool. They've provided like some sort of like a scale thing as well that you can play with nostrils, etc., etc. To get you get you started with that sort of thing. And then um, they also provided just the chisel brush by itself. And uh, chisel crabs, yo, we oh, John, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a crab claw next, okay, guys? I'm gonna make a crab claw next. 
Rick and Morty gizmo. Oh my god, somebody do it. <laughs> so, and then they also have the chisel brush, which comes with a bunch of different tips right here. And you could also, if you haven't noticed, um, you can increase the size here to see, you know, how big you want this. You can make your shelf big or really small, like whatever, whatever you really want, whatever works for you. So you can see that these are also made with the VDM thing uh, in order to create like the, like if you want to use your VDMs, you're going to have to use a chisel brush in order to like, a, like append them to a chisel brush in order for it to work. So these, you can actually make your own sort of sculpting tools as well, which is really, really cool if you want some, like, you know, want that sort of like a sculptural feel, which I'm probably going to play around with. I'll probably make some like um, more boxy shapes and things like that and try and get to get like that really like clay-like feel. But for right now, for right now, they have provided you with some of these, these really nice sort of things. So you can get like that really, 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 nice straight line, really mechanical feeling kind of thing, right like that. Yeah, the subdivision right now, we're, we're up at nine. Um, I'm not sure, I, I think, I think you, yeah, I think you can subdivide more if you want. I'm pretty sure I was able to do that before. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it anyways. I'm subdividing to 10 right now. This is a one mil thing. But remember, the more polygons, so like you can't, the thing is with with VDMs, this is this is something to uh, to keep in mind. If you can't get the detail that you want in something that's like at the ninth level of the sub D on this project, which is around two hundred and sixty um, polys or points rather, if you can't get the detail that you want, I mean, you can subdivide again, but just know you're going to need a lot more geometry on your actual mesh in order to push and pull that much detail around right because it's it's going to be taking this at a tenth level subdivision like kind of thing right so like if you if you have just like this sphere let me show you it's a uh, polymesh 3d right now we have 8,000 points and then i was going to take one of my old spikes that i made really quick whatever and i pulled this out here you can see it's really pixelated because this one was created at a much higher uh, resolution than this cube is and it's just literally taking it's taking what the cube has to offer and pulling it out so the higher your resolution the more it's going to be able to support that detail that you sculpted in so if you have like a crazy crazy amount of detail on this you're gonna want to make sure that your actual sculpt that you're pulling this out of has that kind of topology to work with otherwise yeah you know you know you know it's just uh he's getting this pulled a little bit more oh you know what we can do is use my old like an old school clay tubes right here to get that sort of like placky feel that placky build up hold on Take the, the big brush and just kind of pull it a bunch and then maybe pull this out more as well. Make sure that that feels, make sure that this feels like, like, like nasties. <laughs> Nothing is sexier than quads. <laughs> oh man.
<laughs> Kyle, when you put when you put this up to YouTube, can you just like cut out the first twenty minutes <laughs> of me just being like, uh, where am I? Uh, what what's happening? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I touch a tentacle. <laughs> Tentacles! Oh guys, do you want me to make a tentacle VDM? Okay, I'll make a tentacle VDM. I'll make a cla crab claw. I got this tooth. <laughs> I guess like next up I will show you guys before we start on our next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a bunch of testing with this one because usually on my first go I never get like I've never gotten these to work 100% perfect on my first go because I usually need to like really make sure that this is uh, this is spacing out nicely and a lot of the time I just I gotta finagle with that because uh, because me you know I'm good at messing things up when I'm live. <laughs> Alright, so now we've got a bunch of like this placky stuff. I'm gonna do a little bit of like, a little bit of uh, some smoothing in these areas to make sure that we're getting a nice breakup of forms and it's not too too busy because that's not, you know, it's not, it's not nice to look at. Even though we're trying to make this look like look disgusting, we we still want there to be some rest areas in terms of design. Yes, I'm still talking about design, even though we're t playing around with new new tools. There's always room for design talk. And then from here, we can get in some of those delicious. Okay, maybe not not that. We'll do something like this. We can put on a spray, turn the stroke to... Mm, we'll turn the flow down. Placement variance, a whole bunch. Wait. No? What's my masking like? Is that why? Hmm. Uh, uh, it. Okay. Scale, color, scale variance, color variance, and flow variance, placement variance. No placement? Yeah, okay, I can't get in there. I don't know why. On one mesh and then dynamesh it to plane to make a VDM? No, you, you can't do that. So if you have another thing, I will. I will show you. Um, I'll show you how to project onto a plane. We can try projecting it um, to use it on other models. How would you use one mesh on another model? Yeah. So I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. I just want to kind of get 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 some of these like these goody goody details goody details in here. And yes, I will be giving you guys these afterwards. Full. You could probably actually take some of the damage. Just kind of cut. Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's the, that's what I wanted. So this could, this could be a horn, this could be this could be a tooth. Whatever your little heart desires. Right. Okay. So when you're making a vector displacement match, I'm pretty sure you want to keep this at the highest sub D. Let me save it. Yep. So you want to make this keep make sure that it's at the highest sub D. Da, 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 da. I always like to do this just for good measure, make sure that you're uh, looking at it straight on sort of a thing and then go to a chisel brush 
which I'm just going to go to the one that I had before, which is the, uh, the eight cubed one. And then I'm going to, I am going to go over to brushes. Hold on. Yes. And then we go from mesh. Yep. 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 Okay. And then we go from mesh. From mesh. Append mesh to brush. Boom. Here it is in all of its glory right here. And so now we can try and play with this. See, there it is. Look at that. Hey, we got it in our first try. Oh, hello. We gotta make sure that we have enough topology to work with. So this is a 2 million uh, polygon ball, but voila! Horns. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how easy that is, guys. Look at how easy. All right. See you, Ron. Have a great. Have a great evening. Have a great dinner. But like, like, dang, guys. Look at that. Look at that. So cool. So good. John is the voice for you. <laughs> yeah, so, and like I said before, with these VDMs, you can go uh, the other way around. So look at that, all of a sudden now you have a crevice, right? Like you have some sort of like an orifice. <laughs> so this is, it's it's pretty neat. You can, uh, you can get like holes with this as well. You can turn this and, you know, spray it around. You can, uh, do just a regular dots version and do your lazy mouse on this, right? So you can get fins if you really want. It's kind of cool. Um, you can do a higher lazy step in order... Whoop. Hoop. Nope. Nope. And then we're going to turn that down a little bit. Okay, so that's not working. Never mind. So you can do that, but uh, don't do that. <laughs> Stroke is not really what you want. <laughs> but yeah, you can you, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it, anyways. So that's that's number one. I'm gonna save my brush. Brush. Save as. Do 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 do. Save it as chisel a cubed. <laughs> Your trypophobia is acting up? <laughs> I'm sorry I always do this to you guys. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, Darth Maul. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you, right here, I, I was holding Alt to uh, use, a, use uh, the VDM as a subtractive. Alright. So that's that. And that's one uh, one thing. So you can. You, I'm, I'm just gonna duplicate this subtool and then turn the other one off, just so I have it still. And then in your geometry, you should still have your stuff here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go all the way back with this one into a plane. So if you guys don't know how to open up this. Um, this thing again is you go into your light box over here, which <laughs> I'm so sorry at the beginning of this video, I totally messed up and I forgot where it was, like a true pro. So you go into, <laughs> it happens to the best of us, go into your project, go into miscellaneous, project, miscellaneous, underneath your light box, and then it will be this one. You see the grid, brush 3D template, and it is Z project. So you, uh, you duplicate it, or not duplicate, sorry, you double click it and then it will prompt you, it will say, hey, you're opening a new project, do you want to save? Just say no if you're not working on it, say yes if you are working on something, and then you have this. And you will start at a subdivision level of 5. And it's 1 through 9 already available, you cannot use Dynamesh to do this, you have to sculpt directly on this plane and you have to keep it an exact square, right? Those are your rules. 
Follow them. Also, nobody talks about Fight Club. <laughs> um, that was bad. That was a bad joke. I should feel bad. So, okay. All right. So now, getting getting back getting back to this. Um, I was going to show you guys how to project. So let's say I had uh, another sub tool. So first, first things first. Let's append something. Even though you can only remember, like you can only use the plane in order to make a VDM. But what I'm going to show you is uh, I am out. I didn't actually check the IMM body parts. Is there anything new? Oh, no. Okay, they kept the foot just the same. I'm so happy. The foot is the same. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so we can, <laughs> we can split that. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this foot here. And... A bad joke. Touch tentacle. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can take something and turn it into a VDM if you really want to. Or at least I'm gonna try to show you how to do that. Because I'm not sure if this works. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll work. Okay, so like I said, like, oh my god, stop. We don't want the start. Okay. Nope, no starting. So this, this is your, this is your plane right here. I have the plane selected. Um, this is what I want to make sure that I have, uh, I, I, I am doing the projection with. So, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's just make sure that over here, okay, I do have that on the highest. So, I'm going to mask off these areas that I don't want pushed up there, like so. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do a project all. No. No. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it's not. It doesn't want to. It doesn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe projection. Can we not make project? Am I doing something wrong? Okay. I, mu I must be doing something wrong. How do you move with the gizmo in two directions at once? Uh, what do you mean? Do you, do you mean like... Oh, in two directions at once? So there's these things, right? So you can, you can... You don't have to use this. You don't have to use this. With the gizmo, they have these, uh, these triangles at the very side, which means you can just grab the whole thing and just move it wherever you want in space. It doesn't really um, matter. Negative values, or you have to sculpt all in one way for V. It does take negative values, yes. Has your foot on trucks? <laughs> oh man. Okay, all right. Let me see if it'll work without. Huh, that's interesting. Let me put that down to a lower sub D. Nope. Okay. Okay, so again, I am the queen of messing things up. Uh, ignore me for a minute. Oh, I just deleted that. That's nice. Okay, ignore that as well. <laughs> so we're gonna duplicate this again. Uh, uh, get back up there. I'm gonna start a new project. No. There we go. Okay, fresh one. Let's do this. Don't worry, I still have that other one saved off in my brush, so we're still good for that. And we're gonna do a tentacle. <laughs> oh no, guys, you don't talk about that on this stream. All right, so we can do, we can do like, I'm gonna start at uh, maybe five do like a tentacle here or a, 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 we we said we said a crab claw first let's do a crab claw first first things first see if we even if we can do that so this is being pushed out quite a bit which is uh and then hmm 
You can grab that and then in the deformation we can actually relax plane grid and what that's going to do be like it's going to redistribute your uh, polygons so you, you see that all of this right here um can i can i get the uh the polygon polyframe so you can see that all of this is uh is being pushed all of this topology is being pushed and very stretched. So there's still a lot of extra polygons up here. So what what the thing like what's really important with working with sub D's is you're going to end up um, you're going to end up uh, you know wanting an even distribution of polygons throughout your entire sculpt as you go through your subdivision levels. So in order to actually do that, what I recommend with VDMs is getting your shape first and making sure that that is evenly distributed through the whole thing. And what you can do is actually relax plane grid, which means it'll take everything and just kind of like relax it down towards the bottom sort of a thing. So it'll just kind of like pull it and try to like with this, with this, uh, with this sort of like circle open, it will use the algorithm that's going to maintain your shape the best. And pressing D goes up a subdivision level, and you can do a remask. And so, as I start to push things, which you know what might be better for this one is I'm going to do, because it's a crab claw, I think I'm going to take a top piece and then I'm going to take a bottom piece. So I'll take this top piece first. Oops. Take the top piece. And then I'm going to take a bottom piece. The bottom part is not as uh, And then from here, I can just kind of like build, build or pull this part out completely. There we go. And then I'll be able to cut in from the top here as well. So we can cut all of this in and start building it that way. I think that would be the most ideal because then we're maintaining like this shape around. So I'm going to mask this off right here and then pull this upwards and this is going to be pretty pretty low right now until i do a relax because there's still like polygons up here i can actually put this up by one and then start pulling this out Does it have to stay on? Sorry, hold on. Ah. <laughs> How do you delete from the VDM shelf? I'll show that in just a second. Make custom foot gizmo. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, focus. I know, right? I'm sorry. Um, does it have to stay on the margin of the plane? It has to stay within this square. Like you have to make sure that you're you're maintaining a square. So with your brushes. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I get my... Where is it? Right here. Um, shoot, where, where was it again? There is, there is a way to remove stuff. And I'm just derping. Okay. Maybe in the create and then here you can actually delete one of the meshes from your brush. So um, if I select like this thing right here, which is this residue from an old brush, I don't use it, then you can actually just delete 
but I had something else selected, so I'm gonna I'm gonna load that back up. Or actually, no, I'm pretty sure it deleted. So if you have that selected, delete. Have that selected, and then you can delete, right? So that's actually how you clean up your stuff, is by just going into your brush menu, into create, and then delete. Delete. And so you can actually, like, you can you can copy things as well. Like it says right here, copy mesh to clipboard, or copy one, like, copy meshes, all of them, to clipboard, or copy one mesh. So you can actually customize your brushes a little bit more. Um, make, make, like, certain packs. So maybe this might be, like, your overall pack, and you're just kind of, like, jamming a whole bunch of stuff into this one brush, but you want to, like, clean that up afterwards. Then you can just kind of, like, stuff it all in here. And if you want to edit the brush credit, there we go. You can say the name, so I can be like scales here for that one. Wait. Or yeah, that's the that's just oh, that's just the credit. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Ignore me. Ignore me. So I guess the the big thing here too is if you want if you want your VDMs to show up um, with a name, you're going to want to do that in your subtool. So right here, you're going to want to make sure to rename this, ba -ba -ba. rename it, and then it will show up as such. Uh, does it have to be all quads for VDM or does that matter? T Marshall, yeah, you got to you got to use you got to use this project file. You have to use this like uh, you have to use um, the subtools 1 through 9 or 10 or whatever you want. It has to be that. If you stop, yeah. <laughs> no, it can't it can't go outside the square. No. No, you have to, it, well, no, no, yeah, so if you're being, if you're pulling it up, so it, let's say I wanted this to go outside the square, if I did that, you could totally do that, that's totally fine, but it cannot, like, from here, this stuff right here, on the edge, you can't, you can't take this and move that, it has to, it has to maintain a square. Okay. Ooh. So I think I'm pretty much uh, getting this nice and messy. Alright. So you, you can do this if you want, but I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> Actually, do we want to do... Now nah, we'll just do just a crab claw, whatever. That's all good. Just pull that in a wee bit more. And like I said, guys, you can go negative with this if you want, and I will be doing that uh, in one of the BDMs to show you. For this one, not so much. So if you want to relax this in the deformations tab, in the deformations tab, you have a relax plane grid sort of thing. So then that will relax your sculpt and it will evenly distribute the polygons a little bit more. You can go in and smooth everything out a little bit more. Because this is a complex shape, it's going to take a lot of finessing. It's not just a spike. We're going to try and get that in there. This is looking very... I might want to restart this one. Yeah, I'm gonna restart this one, so we're gonna pull it back and try it from another angle instead. Because you don't want to have that kind of stretching right there, like that. I'm gonna start at maybe like sub D6 so I can get enough, uh... get enough Geo to work with. Crab Claw is a hard one! Just realizing that. <laughs> Mm 
no clip brush or holes. Um, no. Yeah, you can only use things that are compatible with subdivisions. No problems with wax. Uh, even for the edges, let's say the square of inner region had deformity being pushed the opposite direction. Yeah, you could, you, you can, but I don't recommend that. Like the edges, like I, I would recommend keeping it as planar as possible because then you would be getting like that square shape. You would actually like be dragging out like a square onto your meshes. There's Toronto ZBrush user group or Canada. Not that I know of. There might be, but I don't, I'm not a part of it. Oh yeah. First joint thing like after the crab claw itself. Can you edit it after it's created? Yeah, you, I mean like technically, yeah. So like if you want to edit something, sorry, I'm just gonna before I before I get into this, I'm gonna address that because that's a good point. Um, in case you wanted to like rename something, a workaround for that is uh, where's my where's my where's my where's my brush? There it is. So if I go up to high sub D, go like that, and then I just kind of like drag this out in the center of my mesh, then there it is again in all of its glory. And so now, because it's here, I can rename this. <clears throat> Sorry. And then that's how you would edit it, sort of a thing. But in terms of deleting these afterwards, um, yeah, you can you can totally delete them. Like there's no there's no problem there. You can go in and just delete them or you can copy it to your clipboard and then move it over to another brush. But in I don't know what else you mean by uh, by edit. Can you Z remesh it? No, you have to keep it as it is. So, but yeah, so if you, if you want to like edit any of your brushes that you've done before, literally all you have to do because it is a VDM and it was created with this is just drag it out again at the highest sub D onto your mesh again. And then voila, you have all of it all again, right there at your disposal, all of those subdivisions that you had before because it was created with the same thing. So you can, you can just edit it that way. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll be like renaming these as well, like this one. Um, you have to rename it before you make it into the brush in order to actually have it maintain that name because once you put it into your brush, you can't change the name of that. You can just edit the credit of the brush, but that's not the name of each individual thing. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I keep, <laughs> there's a lot of like repetition. Um, okay, so this one is, I guess we'll just call it Tooth 01. And we can go in and uh, I'll delete that one right here. And then I will go into brush and then I'll do from mesh, create. And now it's called Tooth01, and it works the same way as the other one did. Right here, if we turn this up. But as you can see, it's a little bit close to the sides. So I might want to make it just a tad bit tinier. You can actually probably do it just like that and then it's actually what it's doing right now you can see it at the bottom is it is make sure that after you drag everything out that you're going in and uh, and making this flat again so you go into your deformations over here and then morph to grid boom and then I'm just going to smooth all this out again but yeah just make sure that that's happening as well because you're dragging out a VDM onto the VDM plane you're gonna get the uh, the distortion as well so you're just gonna want to have make sure that you're smoothing out the sides when you do that again and then we'll do that again we'll delete that one then brush from mesh boom 
and then boop. And it's there again. All right. So that is going to need a little bit of relaxing. Mm -hmm. Is it the default plane 3D? No, it's in the light box right here. Project miscellaneous right here. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Real question, does service noise work now? I haven't tried it next. I'll try it after stream. I haven't- I- it is a fresh install so it should be fine. But I'm gonna minimize the amount of times that I'm messing up on this stream because it's already quite a bit. Okay, that should be fine. Should be. Keyword should be. Just it. All right, so I have I have a little bit to play around with there to try and make that work. Drag the tooth. Can you mask out the edges, blur them, then draw out the claw? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, that's a good point. Yes, you can. More fresh on the side. Yes, yes, you all are very smart. <laughs> uh, do I like Cintiq or Plain Wacom? I like. I use both of them. I use the uh, Intuos Pro at home, and then I use the Cintiq 27 inch at work. Yeah, I was the only one having problem with the surface. It, it, it was just like a, a, a personal thing, so don't worry. I'm gonna load up that other brush because... Hope, 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 hope. There it is. Okay. This is the same one. Anyways. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's get back to this, and then now we're gonna do the crab claw again. <laughs> Hi guys! I'm gonna do the same thing over and over. Alright, let's uh, put this all the way up, play around some more. Medium mm -hmm. service noise, you could totally do that, yeah. You could totally do that. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can tell you how to activate continuous strokes. So you need to make sure that you have a morph target. So in your tool menu, go down to morph target, store MT, and then in your stroke, 
in Lazy Mouse, you activate Lazy Mouse. And then right here, you have a Lazy Radius and a Lazy Snap. So as long as you have your Lazy Radius on to something that works for you and a Lazy Snap, then you'll be able to continue using a continuous stroke. So I can show that really quick with, uh, let's say, the damn standard. You put the Lazy Mouse on and then the Lazy Snap here. And it works like that. And then it should continue. But I don't have... Right? And then it continues and continues. And it'll all be the same because you have more target on. There you go. That's what it is. Lazy snap. Yeah. No problem. No worries. I'm making a crab claw right now. I know it doesn't look like that yet. <laughs> There's a. Uh, it's gonna be interesting because there is minimal topology to work with. So let's see what I can come up with here. Lego hand! <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alright, so right down here, this one's gonna be this is gonna be really tricky. This is really pushing it. The ability to actually get this as a BDM. Be pretty pretty stoked if we get this. Actually, we could probably make this tinier. I'm gonna go in here and relax it a little bit more. Relax in general. Where's my relax? Nope, my bad. Oh no! Rest in peace, claw. Alright. I'm gonna go this way. Shifty. you have to make sure that the uh, the topology is spaced nicely in order to actually get all of that which is the uh, the tricky part for something like this that has the multiple uh, overhangs but I think we can do it I think we can get it 
think we can. I think I can. I think I can. So then right here. Do that. Oh, we'll put it down like so. Take this, pull it out. Do, do, do. <laughs> Super relaxed, I know. Yeah, no, 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 we're just playing right now. Mm. So what the projection was, you can make a claw using the original sculpting. Oh yeah, I wasn't I wasn't able to project for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's just me. I tried. I can try again. I don't know if maybe it was something I was doing. This is, this is hecka tricky. Okay, so we can probably hold this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this stuff right down here. Oh my gosh, I'm still, you know what, I, I'm still completely, like, I'm so used to using the transpose that I still drag things out. Like, I still, I still drag it. Okay, up the res. This is, this is a lot. <laughs> Smooth that out. It's gonna be messy at the lower res illusions. So, give this a little bit more of a uh, overhang. Make this piece tiny. I think that'll that'll be good. Make it, make it tiny. Look at sharp. Look at a soy bird claw. <laughs> um, I am streaming until twelve, so that is another two more two hours. Yeah. So if you have any questions, ask and we can try to figure it out together, or maybe by chance I might know it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, I can do that. Okay. We can try. Is there is there a way to actually bring that topology up here? Is that what you were saying? See, that's what that's uh that's something that I was trying to do earlier is um is just kind of like dynamesh it or not dynamesh, sorry, you can't dynamesh this, but um what I was trying to do before is project and I couldn't get my projection to work, so Do that. Polish bikers, polish, 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 morph to grid. Yeah, no, I get you. I'm I'm brainstorming too. Brainstorming too. Because if this morphs to grid, then I can't I can't do that that way. Hmm. 
Maybe we can smooth it out. Nope. Well, we can actually, we could probably just do it in low poly. Probably just do it in low poly if this is true. Alright. Or even, is there another? Yes, there is. Okay. We'll just do it in low poly and then keep going up from there. So specifically here. I don't think that's gonna work. Probably not gonna work. Hmm, 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 hmm. Top of brush, we'll try it. Nope. In a little bit. pretty tricky. I'm sure there's a way in order to do that and I'm just derping pretty hard right now. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no no like it will bring up the option to project but it just doesn't seem to want to. Might just be me. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. Let's see if this is shifty, shifty. So I'm gonna just like bring these up as you guys suggested because that is very true. Bring all of this up just a little bit. There is going to be like some pinching, but overall, like a higher subdiv, it'll be able to hide some of it. It's cool that I get to do this with you guys because then we get to like figure it out together. So by holding shift and then releasing shift, you're actually using another uh, version of smooth, which is more of a re relax. And you can see that it's just like pulling the topology upwards um, while trying to like maintain the, the form a little bit. So it's really just like moving the topology. So it, it's, it's gonna get rid of a lot of the form, but at the same time, like it's doing its best. Okay. That I'm just gonna make sure this is good to go sauce. Okay. Pinching, it's a claw. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah, if you guys want to like try stuff and then tell me like what you think is like a better way to do it, like absolutely, absolutely. I'm not doing this all by myself if you guys are here with me. It's totally cool. What do you want me to mask and move? We've got a pretty good density right now in terms of uh, 
in terms of like workable for for this brush it doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to look like it can hold up James, how's it going? What are the advantages of using vector displacements instead of IMMs? Uh, it's just it's just really fast to like pull things out. You don't have to worry of, and it's like it's already part of the same mesh as well, so it's like seamless blending and stuff like that. That's what I I'm seeing it as. Like in terms of like concept sculpting, it's really quick. Like you can just kind of like push them around everywhere, and I think that's pretty cool. Like for, for, for example, like teeth, you can just get a whole bunch of teeth out really, really fast. You can get scales done really fast, you can get a lot of stuff done real fast. Yeah, 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 you can update. It's good to see you too. Yeah, it's good to see you all. This is not exactly the most, uh, the smoothest stream ever, but <laughs> we're doing our best. Yeah, it's showing, it's showing, it's showing how to mess up. What not to do in 408. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. As long as you guys are enjoying yourselves, so it matters. I encourage you to sculpt along with me too, by the way. If you're, if you're not, kind of like learn, learn this stuff with me. Because it is, it's new to everyone, even a lot of people that were on the beta, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but a lot of people that were on the beta, like, are still learning stuff. Probably shouldn't speak for, like, everyone, but... Yeah, there's gonna be so many VDM kits. Like, you guys are gonna be getting this one, like, when I'm done with it at the end of the stream anyways. Like, I'm gonna be posting it. Uh, you'll be able to get it from my Twitter. Your favorite thing is the gizmo and sub-projection damage, yeah? Yeah, sub-projection is actually pretty neat. Um, I, w I actually got 4 or 8 at work at the end of the day, so I was able to play around with the, uh, the sub-projection a bunch. And it's pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. 
basically what it does is it uh, it it redistributes your um, it projects based on detail and it redistributes uh, polygons based on your detail so it tries to maintain um, curves and crevices and things like that or creases and crevices and doesn't distribute as much to planar shapes actually this this is not this doesn't feel right I think that's a thing I think This happens over here. Yeah, well, fantasy crab claw. It's good music. It's good music. Chill too. It's uh, it's just chill step uh, mega mixes. So there's trouble with character of mine doing the serratus area. Those fingers never look right to me. Is there a technique you do to start them and get them quite natural? Um, sculpt. The best way to sculpt a hand, in my opinion, is to start with primitive shapes. So uh, think of it as a plane because hands are very difficult to sculpt and for the longest time I was really bad at sculpting hands. Um, if you want, if you want to get a like, like a good kind of uh, feeling to it, just think about uh, planes. So this part of your hand right here at the top, you can think of it as sort of like, like a cube that's curved a little bit. So if you look at my hand, there, my knuckles are kind of like curved. Everybody's knuckles are kind of curved and you can see this kind of shape happening right here. So think of it as, as a, uh, uh, what's it called? As um, a shape, sorry, I'm totally fried. So you can think of it as like, you know, shapes or whatever. And then every single part like the of the phalange every single intersection or section rather of the finger is a another like you know cube in a sense so you're thinking of this is the top plane the knuckle then changes shape and that's another plane knuckle changes shape and once you get those base shapes in you start sculpting uh, more detail on top of that i'm pretty sure actually shane olsen might have some good uh good stuff on that as well he is a presenter here as well and also, guys, if you haven't given Pixelogic a follow, definitely give them a follow because, like, the amount that I am screwing up tonight will not happen nearly as much as time goes on, like, for all of the other presenters, um, especially because they're, you know, everybody's gonna have time to learn the new tools as well, so everybody will have their own workflows and they they you know there's a few people presenting here that also did beta testing so they're a little bit more on top of it so you can definitely give them a follow and check them out as well when they're presenting here definitely recommend Was George? Yes, he was. <laughs> Snow crab. King. Yes, I've been I've been craving crab for a while. So this works. Yeah, so we have more than enough topology to kind of like play around with stuff now. 
but uh, that was a good point that other people brought up is like just to make sure that you're grabbing as much uh, real estate as you can. But I, I like to stress that you do need you do need quite a bit of space um, here just to make sure that when you're dragging your VDM out onto curb surfaces that you're getting a nice transition because if you don't, well. You're gonna have i mean like it won't, it won't be like the worst thing ever but it there will be a seam and if you don't want seams then you're gonna want to try and do it that other way but yeah i'm excited i'm excited for this one <laughs> i think this is gonna be kind of cool Oh, Serratus, sorry, I, you said Serratus and then I started talking about fingers because I think somebody commented fingers and I was like, oh, you're talking about hands, even though I said Serratus. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, the Sir, okay, you're talking about like the, the other, yes, yes, that part. Yeah, so just understand that Serratus, uh, actually, like the way that it works is they all interlock, like they're, they're corrugated, right? So if you're just kind of like, I see a lot of the time that people kind of, do it like you know here here's one muscle here's another muscle and they're kind of like parallel um you're gonna want to make sure that they're interlocked and they're working as if they're over top of the rib cage because it's the rib cage and then those muscles basically but really like you're just gonna have to look at it like a lot of like reference and stuff just reference 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 will the polygroups be preserved good question we can actually test that out we can test that out for sure I can polygroup stuff. It might be. It actually might be. We will test it with this one. I promise you we will test it once I get done uh, sculpting it. If anybody beats me to it though, let us know. Oh right, I was gonna I was gonna go down here and do a morph to grid. Alright, let's see. Morph to grid. Boom. Yep. You can project. Yeah, that's what I fig that's what I figured. All right, yeah. So are you just using the regular project all? What are your settings? You've got Oh, okay. So it's basically the same as uh what I was doing. Huh. Weird. Interesting how it wasn't like I wasn't getting that to work. I'll try it again. We can try that again. Probably user error. Oops. Alright, let's get this going right here. I'm gonna try and flatten this a little bit more. Overall, okay, that's that's probably not gonna work. I'm gonna undo all of that. I think it was better off before when I was making it sort of like a uh, sort of like a chunkier claw. I think we'll just do that instead. Just a chunky, chunky thing right here. Fifty, go down low levels. 
really smooth that out. I'm not sure what you would use a crab claw for. I guess you could just kind of like, you know, get this and like, uh, <laughs> make some like really weird abstracty looking things, perhaps. Um, I wouldn't use this on like an actual thing, like to, hey, I guess it, you, you could, you could just like make like weird things coming out, I guess, of a, of a mesh. All right, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Get this uh, this one done so we can move on to the next one and stop dilly dallying. Get some learning on. All right, what's that? Big beady claws. <laughs> Polish flatten tools to make a harder surface. Yep, I know. I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the sheet though. Making sure that we have enough topology. Huh. Trust me guys, a comp com complex shapes with this sort of thing, like, it's it's really good, but it is, it is tricky to get it, uh, right. And I encourage you guys to try it too, like, uh, like, don't take my word for it, like, try it, play around with it, see how you like it, but it is, uh, like I said, like, you can't, that doesn't have a ton of detail right there. It's, it's an interesting challenge though, <laughs> like uh, trying to sculpt stuff with uh, with limitations like that. Like I don't mind it, I don't mind it at all. But it does, uh, it does take some finessing, for sure. It, it might come in handy some days. This is true. This is true. You never, never know. It's gonna make this really big and chunky. Alright. Get a little bit of here. Get a little bit of that intersection thingy thing there. Kind of have like an overhang. And because this is an organic, it's totally fine if it's like kind of kind of messy, regardless. This can come in like so. Get some of that. Get some of that right out here. Get this, get this, yep, and you can probably start pulling these ones out just a tad, just like a little bit to give it a little bit more shape. Uh, song name, I can give you my playlist, here we go. Also, guys, I'm gonna be going through a bunch of uh, a bunch of the Z Classroom stuff again, just so that I can like freshen up on all of these tools because I don't know the extent of all of them. 
need to freshen up on everything. I recommend you guys do that as well, like just kind of like go through the videos again um, for certain things that you think uh, would be useful. Like I'm pretty sure over at Z Classroom, do you guys, I think, let me check, let me check really quick. Z Classroom, I think they have, um, I think they updated it for 4 8 so I think they have stuff on the Boolean things, the Boolean stuff as well. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we've got the 3D brushes. <laughs> you use a VDM brush for those bumps. <laughs> yes, all the VDMs, yes. Oh man, funny. That's, yeah, like lots of mediums. <laughs> Ugh, okay. Hello, welcome to, welcome to experimentation school. Oh yes, Ask ZBrush, true, yeah. Um, Michael Pavlovich actually came out with a bunch of really good videos, sorry. I'm gonna- I'm probably gonna be looking at Michael Pavlovich's videos just to like brush up on this kind of stuff because he... He has crammed a whole bunch of stuff into a few videos. You can check that out on his YouTube. I don't know if anybody has a link for Michael Pavlovich's YouTube, but I saw that he posted a whole bunch of like four or eight videos recently, so you can go and check that out. He's also a presenter here on ZBrush Live. And I would like, if you if you really want to like see comprehensive like how to's in terms of like this, the, like all of these new tools, I would definitely like, you know, keep a lookout for Michael Pavlovich because he's probably going to give you a lot more information uh, than me. <laughs> when I'm like, oh, where am I? Hello. <laughs> because I still have a lot of playing around to do with this. Lattice tools, just real quick. Sure. All right. I will get... I don't know, wait, hold on. It, we might... Mm, I don't know if we can with the... I don't know if we can with the subdivisions. Hold on, let's see. No. Can we do any of them with the subdivisions? No. Okay. So if you want to use the, the lattice or any of that kind of cool stuff, all you got to do is go into your gizmo and then right here you will have your it's the little gear so if you click on the gear then you get all of like these um these kind of things so you can get your bend arc bend curve deformer extender twist taper multi-slice and flatten so if you put on a deform mm, okay okay come on if you <laughs> delete your subdivisions level <laughs> subdivision levels and then you put on a deformer and then you get your lattice right here so then you have all of these options, right? So if you turn symmetry on, this will turn it on for certain planes. So one is parallel symmetry, whoop, and two is mirror symmetry. All right, so if you if you have that, that is parallel symmetry, and then if you have mirror, whoops, you have mirror symmetry on, and you do it, whoop, won't go on the other side. But yeah, you can turn your symmetry on there, and then this is also X symmetry, so you can get it on multiple axes, axes at once. Turn that off anyways, and uh, right here, whoop, if it'll tell me what it is. Hello. 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 Yeah, so this is smoothness, this is X smoothness. Y smoothness, you get your div divisions, so you can actually change how many uh, points you have on your lattice as well. 
if you're if you're doing just like major changes i'd suggest like you know taking your lattice down to a very few amount of points so that you can get like you know your big big changes in uh in like general directions but then if you want to come in and fine tune it you can like you should you should just kind of like you know do a whole bunch of lattices and then and then start pushing and pulling points like that like so so that's how you use the lattice and then if you want to get rid of the deformer you actually can come in here and then you can reset your deformer or you can delete it and then it'll just remove all of that information but if you're doing something like let's say I put this bend this bend curve on right here and then I do um, like a twist or whatever like let's say this is what i wanted to do with symmetry active like let's say that's exactly what i wanted to do and i want it was like okay that's great then what you have to do afterwards is go into your deformer and then say accept and now it has been applied to your mesh and you can go in and add like another deformer as well so it doesn't like it doesn't stack you have to kind of like apply it to uh you have to apply it to your your mesh so that's a that's the thing that you gotta do. Ooh, uh -oh. oh, I think that was an auto save. <laughs> yeah, so you do a bunch. Oh, just a uh, uh, uh. What's going on? Okay. Anyways, I haven't gotten to playing around with a ton of that yet, so hopefully that helps a little bit. A little, little bit, and you can't you can't use that with subdivision levels. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be using it on these VDMs right now. Uh, I can't move the lattice point with the move brush, can we? Um, um well, <laughs> hold on. So I don't pack out of my bum bum. No, you can't. So you're, yeah. So when you're in a, a deformer, like you're, you're basically going to be moving this with, uh, with just these points. It's not. It's like a specific, like just a, a cursor sort of a thing. If you want to move multiple points at once, you can select them all. Like, like, uh... oh shoot, how how was it again? So if you if you use this, hold up. How is the selection working? So like so yeah so you can mask off certain points and then use the actual gizmo to move the other points so if you mask off your points and then take the gizmo and just kind of like you know move it like that it works it works just fine but you have to like grab the move part right here so you can you can mask off whatever you want and then boom right so that that works just fine but you can't use the uh, the move brush itself. You're using like what's what's in the uh, the gizmo. Yeah, there you go. Transpose master for deformations. Ooh, okay. Went nuts when they revealed the lattice, yeah. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's gonna help with like moving things a lot as well. Yeah, uh, Pavlovich also has a gum road, so definitely check out that stuff. Yeah, he's made he's made a ton of new videos. So if you guys want like actual comprehensive stuff, like instead of like me like kind of fumbling around right now, like then uh, check his stuff out. I can I can tell you in a couple of weeks from now, I will be a lot more helpful with this kind of stuff. Um, but I was thrown into the ring with you guys, to be like, oh my god, it's so cool. But also, how to use it.
Okay. I think overall I'm just gonna kind of accept this one and then I'm gonna move on. This one was kind of like a bust. We'll just keep getting better at them though as we do more. Alright, anyways, I'm, I'm just gonna accept this one, so look at it straight on. I'm just gonna quickly make sure that I am getting this all morphed to the grid, nice and morph grid-like. <laughs> Boom. And softening this out by going down some sub-Ds, sub just doing a little bit of like a smooth, making sure that this is all good. Because if it isn't, we're going to get a seam. And we might very well still get a seam with this one. So it can take some finessing, as I have learned. It didn't remember the polygroup information. Okay, all right. Then I won't. I won't go and bother to do that. It's good to know, though. It's good to know. So then, for this, eh, we can do. Ba, 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 ba. Where's my brush? Go and grab the brush that you had all your stuff on. So this one. I'm gonna make sure that this is named differently. Rename as Grab Claw. And then with that, you go into your brush palette and then do from mesh. Boom, we have a crab claw. Let's test it out. There it is. I can already see this is going to be a bit of a seam, so I'll have to fix that. There's a little bit, eh, it's not too bad. Just needs a little bit of more smoothing or whatever. But yeah, that's it. That's, that's that. For the crab claw, just make sure that there's enough info there so you can get a bunch of hello. I have many arms. Actually, let's let's do let's just put this on radial symmetry. Hold on. Put this on radial. Oh, everywhere. Crab claws. Uh... <laughs> oh man. Hell's to the yes. All right, I'm going to save that brush again. Bloop. Can I sculpt an egg? I could. It's a dust mite. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's some pretty crazy things that you can that you can do with the symmetry and this stuff as well. So I can, I'm gonna turn that. I'm gonna, uh, oh, oh. So if I just do maybe the X and then get some crab claws going in here. And then if you go into the negative, you can get some interesting kind of like stuff as well. Ooh, look at that. And then you can just kind of like, you could probably get like some really neat stuff actually. Just pulled all up into the circle and stuff like that. And if you lower the Z intensity as well, you can get different shapes too, because it's not going to be like taking the entire thing. So you can get some weird stuff just by playing around with the, the Z intensity, like little like stubby, stubby crabs, stubby claws instead, if you really want. Um, actually, I'm curious. So we could go down into the uh, the brush modifiers and go to the strength. Now I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna get by going by two strength. Oh, extra long claws. There you go. So you can play with that as well. And if we go into your tooth, into the tooth, and do the two strength, bam! Look at that. VDMs for days. <laughs> claws come out of the holes yeah all right so save this one as two 
save. Arenos. All right, and now I'm gonna do, because I, I saved this as a ZTL anyways, so I'm gonna go all Z way back. And now we can do a new one. Huzzah! What up? A game of dodgeball. <laughs> I think this is like stab your arm or stab your eyes out. That would be so bad. I don't want to play with that. Mm -mm. Nope. No thanks. <laughs> okay. What's the, what's next? Insect leg? You guys want insect leg? You guys give me some suggestions and I am going to load up the thing that I did while I was on the beta because I haven't showed that yet. I didn't get to do a whole bunch, but meet meet me. Team at Rocket League. <laughs> Claws on claws, so everybody- oh, tentacle. Tentacle. Alright, I hear you. Tentacle. Okay. Oh boy, oh boy. There it is. So, this is- this is something that I got to do while I was on, uh... While I was on the beta. I don't know if the booleans need to be active or whatever. And this was this was actually really quick. So, um, like like I showed you, these are the uh, the VDMs that I used for this, and you're able to just kind of like get some really cool effects just by like layering and stuff like that with the VDMs. So, as much as I'm fumbling around right now, there there are things that I was able to accomplish that were it, it, that is a lot faster when people aren't watching and I'm like under pressure. <laughs> But uh, this is some of the stuff that I got to do, like, in terms of the, the booleans. I got done that kind of stuff really fast. It's just like, you know, putting shapes on shapes and just cutting away and stuff like that. And then you end up with something really nice and you can just, like, you know, kit bash it a little bit. Take the same piece, copy it down a whole bunch. That sort of a thing. So, uh, so that, that's... That, it, it's a lot of fun. And then this was like the continuous stroke as well, is just using this as um, as the chisel brushes. So these things right here, I was able to get the the default from default uh, ZBrush. What they've provided everybody with is just like dragging it along and it's all like on the same level just to get some lines out. And then this was also uh, the VDM brushes as well. So these are these are just these right here just pulled out a whole bunch. So I was able to take that into a stroke and just kind of like pull, 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 and you have a line of teeth immediately. So in terms of concepting, it is so great. Like I thought that that was amazing. And another thing too is just like opening this. So I don't know if you guys know about, I'm, I'm sure you do if you watched the presentation yesterday, um, there's a multi move. So if you grab like a bunch of this stuff, hold up. So you have to go control, blah, 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 where is it? Yeah, multi-select right here. So if you're selecting multiple subtools, you can enable this and then control shift click on the subtools you want to move. And you're going to be able to move all of them and unlock this in order to place where you want your pivot point and then lock it again in order to affect your mesh. Bam, you're moving multiple subtools, and then to clear that selection, just control shift drag. And now you have moved all those subtools at once without going into the transpose master. And so now you can actually go grab a bunch of these because this is a separate piece and do the same thing. You can rotate it. Boop. Right up like that. Get some get some like opening action and then you can start sculpting in there sort of a thing clear and bam now it's got a multifaceted jaw so it's actually pretty it's pretty cool that you can that you can do that kind of stuff as well makes moving things around so much easier so so much easier let's go back to the ball actually this guy i had started an entire an entire body 
for him. But then I never actually was able to get it done because stuff got in my way and I had to stop using the beta. I can show you. What history does that save to? What you mean? So this is the unfinished, like, entire model that I would- I'm probably gonna, like, actually work on some more because just, like, the design of it I felt like was pretty- pretty fun. Um, it's more of, like, a, a hopper kind of, like, mech thing. So I wanted to try and get all of these pieces. Like, you can see that I had started, like, you know, getting these cleaned up and things, but I didn't actually have that fleshed out enough that I felt comfortable with sharing, so... We got a fuss done. <laughs> How did you turn the claw into a VDM? Uh, you can watch like the video, uh, the VOD, like in the first like first hour, so you can actually see that kind of stuff. So that's that's something that I was working on, which I I, I hope that I can actually continue. I want to actually get that fleshed out more. But this is using a bunch of booleans in the sides and stuff like that, and I just didn't get to get around to it. Anyways. Wanted to share that with you, to show you that there are things, some really cool stuff that you can get done with what I'm doing right now, because I know it's a little bit stale just like watching me like, oh look at the BDMs, but BDMs are really cool once you get them working, as you've seen. The multi-moves save the move in each individual sub-tool history. Yes. Did I use a curve brush setting for the belly part? Curve brush set for the belly part. Uh, are you talking about the... Um... Oh, you mean like... Are you talking about array mesh? Did I use array... I didn't use an array mesh. But you can use an array mesh in order to get that sort of like curve with all of those... Um, with all of the, uh, the tools. Okay, tentacle time. Let's do this. This one's gonna be a lot faster. <laughs> and she says. I say that now, but we will see. Alright, let's do this. This one, we're gonna go to here. Relax. Relax. There we go. Distribute it a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, the repeating bits on the belly, I didn't use a curve brush, I posed them, but you can use an array mesh for that. Okay, cool. Oh, that's why. Mm, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Who? Who? Didn't mean to press that. What up? <laughs> Tentacles, yeah. Slurps. <laughs> oh, 
I see. Okay, so we're we're sculpting in the wrong side. So uh, you might notice that you start getting like some weird um, brush stuff. That's because like you're you might be sculpting on the other side of the uh, the plane. So you can actually just flip the, the oh okay, or yeah, you can flip the normals. But I think you gotta be at the highest sub D. It said. Yeah, just like. Hold up. This might have been a mistake. This might have been. This might have been a mistake. <laughs> so, guys, how do you like Corey? I love it. <laughs> uh, shakes its head. It goes back at the ground. Yeah. Okay. So now this should work just fine. Yeah, so I flip the normals and everything's just fine now. So if you find that you're sculpting on the wrong side of the plane, just flip the normals, make sure that you're at the highest subdiv, and it'll be sculptable again. I was like, oh man, why is this not working? <laughs> Blip. That's okay. We got it. We got it. We good. <laughs> Bleh. Soundtrack to my life. Bleh. I think one thing that's going to be really useful at work um, with this uh, with this new uh, these new tools is definitely the the continuous stroke and uh, also the multi sub tool mover and selector, that's going to be super useful as well for doing changes and stuff. The crab claw was pretty pretty tricky, and you know why it was really tricky is because uh, there wasn't like because it had two bits kind of oh, like hanging out. It had to borrow from other parts uh, the topology. So the topology was really really like you know widely spread. Like it wasn't it was uh, it wasn't it wasn't like you know the most ideal. So. Shapes like that just take like extra finessing, I find, when it comes to these uh, VDM brushes. This is at nine. Alright, let's make sure that we have. enough stuff going on over here. So you could you could technically make like entire creatures and stuff like this like just just to uh, to kind of like come come out or whatever. Oh, that's actually a good idea. We could make like a little um, a little like crevice with a little bug coming out of it. I'll show you guys how to do that. Hey, Erin, you just updated. That's awesome, guys. If you have an update, an update. Also, if you want to be a part of ZBrush 4R8, now you can with the free trial, which is 45 days down below. Feel free to check that out. Yes. My my mic, um, I'm using an AT or um oh my gosh. I'm using an Audio Technica AT 2020. <laughs> hey Zomax. Thank you. 
We can Try to push the, the the curve on this. And then let's do one more. Sucky. Hey, hey, Brendan, how's it going, guys? Brendan's another presenter here at ZBrush Live. And he is awesome. Be sure to give him a look-see. Say hi. Is this Cad? Uh, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Maya. No, it's, it's ZBrush. It's a new update of ZBrush. And we're learning how to use it together. Right now I'm just making a tentacle VDM. All right. MS Paint 3D. I know it's come. It's come such a far, long, long way. ZBrush 4R8 is a free release, so if you haven't uh, updated, like that is if you have 4R7. So if you have 4R7, you can update, no problem. No if, ands, or buts. Do it. No, you can't use Dynamesh on these at all. No Dynameshos. Teach me how to VDM. That's what we're doing all tonight What for another hour. <laughs> it's been the VDM stream. What up? So you have to sculpt everything with tons of sub Ds. Yeah, you go up to like sub D 10 I've been going up to. I think you could do one more if you're feeling lucky. Um, but just keep in mind that the amount of detail that you're putting on these is going to be dependent, like, you know, by using it, it's going to be dependent on, uh, your mesh, like how high res your mesh is. So that's another thing. But yeah, I, I was having, I was having some issues with a crab claw, for example, like, uh, just earlier we were sculpting that for a while because... It uh it is it is pretty tricky to kind of get something like a complex shape like a crab claw. Like I mean it's not that complex but it is uh there there are multiple extrusion points and I think that's where it starts getting a little bit difficult. So what I would recommend if you're doing something like a crab claw and you want like the maximum amount of uh of information in that VDM, I think I think the best thing to do would maybe be to sculpt the top part of the claw and then do another one where it's the bottom part of the claw. So then you would be pulling out that claw and then VDMing the bottom part of the claw onto the other part of the claw, onto the top part of the claw. So maybe that would work. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't tried it, but maybe, maybe. So here, here's where I feel like using another VDM actually might be beneficial, and I don't think I have. Wait, let's see. Maybe, maybe we can use something here. No, 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 no. Let's, uh, to my chisel, my A-cube stuff. 
Nah. So if you had like, if you could make like a, a sucker, then you could be pulling those out as well. We could just do that really quickly. Subtool, duplicate. Actually, I'm gonna delete that, hold on. Let's put this here, duplicate. Oops, back here, put this back. Boop, 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 boop. Take this one, turn this one off. I'm gonna make like a sucker really quick. So we're gonna use a VDM on a VDM. <laughs> the Grubber, hey, what's up, good morning. Hey, Anthony Cupstos, I'm so sorry. I think I missed you before. What's up? How are you doing? Anything we say is speculation. Oh, yeah, for that, yeah. There's a sucker board every minute. No, don't say that. I mean, it's maybe a little true. Don't say that. All right, so we can do... That was the wrong side. So if you pull this up, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to... Do a quick mask of the sides because for anybody joining now, you got to make sure that your VDM is nice and masked off. Okay, and then we can do it like this and then push it in inwards. And I do something like that, and then I'm going to take this. Oops. Oh. What? Excuse? Maybe we can do it like this. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, get it. And we're gonna make this sort of like a sucker, sucker based thing. Put that to the maximum, maximum capacity. download the update yeah you'll be lost well that's that's okay i'm kind of lost too and i was using the beta but it's i'm, I'm like kind of rusty from uh, not using it for a little bit so now i'm just jumping back into it as well so i'm getting i'm getting used to it again so don't worry like if you if you need any help i i can recommend to you guys michael pavlovich's videos he runs through literally everything um so definitely Definitely check that out. He's uh, he's he's great. He will explain to you like a very very clear how to do this sort of a thing. Whereas me, I right now I'm just kind of like experimenting, having fun with it. So if that's not your style, no offense taken at all. If you want like comprehensive how tos, I can answer a few questions. But like you've seen, I am totally learning this as well, and I am loving it. It's so fun. It is so, so fun. Ah. A game engine fairing? Oh my god. <laughs> MK, I have a art Facebook. If you want to follow that, you can. Oh, that is so nice. I'm so glad to hear that, Anthony. I'm glad you guys are having fun with my, uh, my, I'm like a flailing fish. I am Saba Ping. That's what I am right now. Wah. <laughs> there you go. Glad you guys are enjoying it, though. That's good. So the sucker has like this like thing right in the middle too. Ooh, maybe not that much. So we can pull pull this stuff up, and then ooh, maybe not that much. Maybe not that much. There we go. Do like another thing, just to I don't know. It doesn't have to be like super realistic what we're doing.
So if you guys are new here, I am giving these brushes away and you can do with them as you feel fit, feel, feel you need to after the stream is done. All right, so just to make sure before I do this, I go to my deformation and then I morph to grid real quick. Make sure that I'm getting that 100% the way that it needs to be. Go down a few sub Ds and we can smooth this out so that it is nice and smooth when we make it a brush. this out this out yep okay and then we grab our brush this is pretty ugly looking but that's okay because we're using it for a specific use and then I'm gonna quickly rename this one as oh wait where did the other one go hold on brush load brush chisel what where did I save the other one oh oh okay I'm loading the wrong one that's why I was like oh no I lost my brush I lost it I lost it all guys no I think we're gonna be good uh, I gotta find it <laughs> There it is. Okay, and then we're renaming this one. We're renaming it as, I don't know, Sucker. Sucker. <laughs> and from Mesh. Boom. Sucker. Okay, and then we're gonna go back onto this one. Turn this off. Go back onto here. Now we have suckers, but we gotta make sure that we have enough topology for that to actually work. But yeah, that's that's the idea, is now now we have these medium suckers, right? Uh VDB was a VDM of an object, like a rock or scale extracted by a 3D scan? Out of an OBJ. No, I have not tried to do that because I don't. I don't think the thing is like you have to, t like you would have to project it then. Yeah, that would be really cool. But I, you would have to project it from like a plane. Like you got to make sure that it's on the plane. E three parties. All right, have a great time. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, this is already at SD. Okay, let me see. Let's save this. Bing! Okay. Control B. Oops. Uh. Whoops, hold on. Subdivision history, man. All right. So let's see here. Let's see if we can do anything with redistributing. Yeah, there's not much that I can do in that stage. Hmm. Maybe... 
Do something like this and then do a little bit more re-sculpting. Draw the suckers on their separate meshes? Nope, it's all part of the same mesh. That's why, like, that's the, the interesting part about the VDMs is it's actually all part of the same the same mesh when you drag it on. And that's why you have to do it through this method, which I'm still trying to get down pat. Alright, we can do another one, make sure that this is getting some more info here. Let's see if this will work. We have a lot more info in this area, but I'm not sure if it's enough still for that. So we did pull this up pretty far. So it might... Kind of got it. anymore. Of using a VDM brush versus an insert mesh brush. Um, so the the benefits that I see with it is that it, it, it all becomes a part of the same mesh, right? So it, what what's great about that is you can play you can play around with like sprays and uh, getting scales kind of like really fast whereas IMMs like yeah you can get them in um in like a curve and stuff and that's like totally great like if you want to put scales down but if you want to do like uh stuff coming out like uh, of the actual mesh that you're using then it's you know it's a no-brainer because it becomes part of the mesh what it isn't good for is low poly stuff so if you're doing anything low poly you're going to be wanting to use IMMs not the VDMs because whatever you do with VDMs it has to be really high poly. So that's uh that's definitely something that you're you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using something really high poly that it is able to capture all of the all of the details that you you have. I think this one because we can't get that kind of detail, what I'm gonna do instead of suckers we're going to do little spiky things. Because I did pull this out too far. So, I think I think uh with the next thing that I do, I'm going to make sure to keep it pretty small so that we can keep all of the geo in that area. And try maybe that might that might work a little bit better. Mm. 
Yeah, like it is like I probably wouldn't use this as like an actual VDM for anything, but it's sort of like it's one of those things where it's cool to learn the limitations of it and see what exactly you can and can't do and how far you can stretch it. So we tried a crab claw and then that that like turned out okay. It worked it worked pretty well for the tooth. I think this would be really great for wrinkles. Like as like a, some sort of like a like a wrinkle brush. Yeah, it is. It is pretty pretty tough to get all that information into something that big. I'm going to I'm going to try it again. Oops. Let's do this like so. Duplicate that one. Go back here, and then we'll put this back. Here it was, and turn it off. I'm gonna try something a little different. Yeah, yeah, I'm just testing stuff. And then, you, like, I was gonna give these away too for you guys, in case anybody wanted them. I don't know if you actually are gonna find any use for them, but just because. Why not? So as I'm pulling out, I'm going to want to, let's say, uh, let's do a relax. Yeah, I think this is going to work a lot better. So I'm relaxing to the plain grid right now. It is kind of pinchy over there. Hold up. Maybe... Maybe we can get a better distribution if we do... Circle, stroke, modifiers, center square, so it's perfect. Boop, 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 boop. 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 There we go. So we can try doing this. Pull it out. That's the plain grid. Plain grid. Yeah, that feels that feels better. And then I'll pull all of this out, and I'll just make sure that I'm like you know relaxing it like fully, so that we're getting like the maximum dis like distribution. And then I'll do it straight first, and then I'll curve it. I think that might work. Uh, the best. Uh, about this version of ZBrush, you haven't found all that much about it. Okay, so the, the new stuff uh, with ZBrush, you can find all of that, like if you if you do up, uh, upgrade, a PDF comes with it, like a what's new sort of a thing. So you can check that out. But what's uh, what I'm doing right now is creating VDM brushes. So basically that's going to, like it, it, it takes anything that's coming off of this plane, no matter like what curve or anything is, uh, it's, it's basically going to take that and it's going to take it outside of a mesh. So, for example, right here, we have a whole bunch of like teeth and stuff like that. 
teeth and crab claws and stuff like that that we made. Um, you can see what the brush... That's chisel creature. This chisel brush. So right here, this is like, you know, the, the kind of stuff that I'm doing is you're just kind of like creating these claws, which right now I have a smooth or a strength modifier of two on. Turn that to one. So you can you can actually make meshes to pull out of the actual geometry. So you can see how that is working right there. And that is uh, what I'm doing right now. So I'm actually going to be making like a tentacle here and I'm trying to figure out what the best uh, way to do that is. I just have to, I have to, oops. Triple D, triple D one more time. There we go. And then it looks very awkward right now, but we're going to be fine. And then I have to flip the normals. It's reconstructing because I started it on the wrong side. Where is the VDM square that I use? If you go into your light box and then you go into project, miscellaneous, and I will show you in just a second when this is done reconstructing. <laughs> because I did it on the wrong side of the um, plane. So I have to flip the normals. <laughs> I'm trolling? How am I trolling? Uh, there's also, so, um, Sam, there's also live booleans, which, uh, you'll be able- Actually, you know what, if I were you, like, if you want to know, like, all the stuff that's new with ZBrush, um, watch the live stream from yesterday. Yesterday, uh, there was an announcement and release of this version, so they went over everything, like, all of the tools that are going to be available. Um, if you want, uh, what's it called? Oh my gosh, I am so good at talking tonight. If you want like more how-tos and stuff, I mean, I've been talking for three an hour, like more than three hours straight, so, eh, huh, my voice. Okay, if you want more how-tos, go and check out Michael Pavlovich, who's also a presenter here on uh, ZBrush Live, and he does really great how-tos in terms of that kind of stuff. So he did a whole bunch of 4R8 ones, and I would recommend you definitely check that out, just because, like, the dude's so good at explaining stuff. So if you are confused by anything that I've been doing, because I have, uh, been, <laughs> been figuring it out with you guys, then go and check him out. This is, this is, this might be frozen right now. I'm gonna give it, like, two more minutes. Michael Pavlovich, yeah. Michael Pavlovich. Yeah, I might be stuck right now. Yeah, and you can also go to the documentation. You're going to be able to see that kind of stuff as well. Right there. Like, you'll be able to learn that stuff there. Yeah, yeah, projects, miscellaneous, and it is the one that looks like a grid. It does, it opens an entire new project. Okay, right. I, I think I'm gonna have to restart this because I think it might be stuck. I like I like how it's just stuck on this screen too. It's so good. So good right now. <laughs> yeah, no worries, messy. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a restart because I think I got it to whoop. I got it stuck.
The YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> oh man. I feel like I feel like this is gonna be one of the most uh, stressful for people to watch um, videos. <laughs> It's like, how many screw-ups can you do while live? Okay. Oop, there it is again. Okay, so if you want to open it, you go into your Lightbox project, and then right here, what, project, sorry, project, miscellaneous, and then brush 3D template, ZP ZPR. So it's a ZBrush project. You tried to stretch a VDM really wide. You'd like to see if ZBrush handles it well, like doing a mushroom shaped thing. Sure, for sure we can try that. Why not? Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna load up. Oh no. Where did I... Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. Alright. <laughs> oh no, my hotkeys didn't save. Blip. Alright, let's try this again. I just gotta assign some hotkeys real quick. Blade. Five. Okay, we should be good to go. Yes, we are. All right. So you want something super wide, like a mushroom? That's gonna be real difficult to redistribute. All right. Let's try it. Let's try and get as much real estate as possible here. Actually, do this one again. So, oh yeah, that's another thing. If you do control and alt while you're dragging out a mask, it will mask everything but what you have selected as the, what you need to have the mask as. Right? So that's a change that they made, which is really nice. Is very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, you want me to use the move gizmo in order to pull it out. But then I have everything up here. In the shape of melons. Errors make it fun. Alright, okay. I mean, sure. <laughs> Get that radial on. Oh, no, it's on the Z axis. There we go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna relax this. So, real wide. 
Let's do something really wide. You're saying like that. That might be... I'll do some twisties. Like this. Yeah, like, I mean, yes, but we, we, like, that's, like, because we have, uh, T. Marshall, sorry, yes, it's because we got, like, as much real estate as possible, it's just gonna be a little bit tricky, like, I'm gonna keep it as, uh, like, I'm gonna keep it masked, and then try not to have to morph anything to the grid, and maybe we can get it to work really cleanly that way. Do some kind of like mushroom thing. You can put the radial count up a bit more. Actually, do it a lot more. Let's do... Let's do a lot. Because then we can start getting some, like, really cray-cray stuff. Some, like, overhang. Push this out. Get a little bit more detail going on. Taken inspiration from Soul Sword. Oh. <laughs> hey meow. Do I use Blender? This is uh this is ZBrush right now. So this is not this is not Blender. I don't use Blender for sculpting. don't recommend you use Blender for sculpting either if you have access to this. Oh, actually, we could probably use the uh, the chisel brush for that. Let's get let's get the chisel brush. Ooh, buddy. Okay. Let's up that. Let's do it one more time. There we go. So we could probably get this. Let's do like 70, maybe that'll be good. We've reached level 11! <laughs> yeah. Microsoft Word for sculpting. Oh my god! Don't even... Don't even joke. Oh, this is a lot. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down now. Just a little bit, so it's not so... Oh, it's still a lot. Alright. 
right, and then we can we can just get like some crazy woo pattern up top. I don't know. Lines of code in order to sculpt. Oh my! Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. Alright, now I'm just gonna go in and, uh... Get a little bit more shape in there. I'm gonna change this, uh, material. <laughs> Oof. Jeez, that's better. in here and I am sure with this kind of stuff too you could probably uh, get a better result if you were taking more time with this stuff but I am so eager to see the results right now because I'm just kind of like playing around and testing things <laughs> I'm being careful not to touch the outside area. Actually, maybe I can use uh, clay tubes in this area. Clay tubes? Nope, that's clay. Clay tubes. There it is. Let's get uh, a circular. Hmm, no, I don't like that. As for quick wide shape and full mushroom, I, well, like I, I don't know, cause like I'm offering these things to you guys afterwards, so I'm just like, oh, I might as well make them like, like okay, you know, like it, it's not, they're not the best things ever, but there's something that like you could maybe use. Like I never wanna, I never wanna give you guys like complete garbage. It's not, that's not something I want to do, even though I, I don't know how to do this that well yet um I still I still want it to be okay but yeah if you want to know how to make a musher radial symmetry is your friend get that a little bit smoother This is more like a mushroom tree than anything. Maybe we can use the other VDMs on this. <laughs> a fun guy. Oh my god, remember Charizard? <laughs> Yes, yes, McLovin, I know you were talking to me on Instagram. How's it going? Okay. It's decent <laughs> enough to keep going. And then if we grab, we could probably like make some, some kind of like cool thing with the sucker. 
Oh, the sucker is just not. <laughs> what if we like lower the Z intensity a whole bunch? You get some like weird like. You get some weird stuff going on at the top. Spray it. Oh, girl. Yes. Look at that. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Check it. One sec. One sec. Oh, what? What? That's kind of cool. The VDM negatively. Yes, you can by holding Alt. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try and do some stuff with this uh, this mushroom. Now let's see if it. Uh... I'm gonna try maybe scratch this stuff up a little bit. Scratch the edges up. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this. Ugh. Yes, I did. I just changed the Z intensity and then you can do some sprays and stuff with the VDMs. So we're gonna do this. Let's save real quick. Okay, there's my brush. And then... Oh, we gotta rename it. Remember, before you do any of that, rename it to what you want it to be. Mushroom. Oh, one. In case you want more mushrooms. I don't know. Then, from mesh. Okay, so that looks like it might have screwed up, but we can try. So we might have screwed it up. Oh! That's because the Z-Tetsi is low. Well, oh, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Looks like it's working pretty well. You just need like a really high resolution mesh to handle this one. That's the only thing. But yeah, it looks like it's working. So if we, yeah, this is 8 million now. And that's, yeah, that handles it. So there you go. Get a uh, mushroom, get, get your mushroom forest on. Hell yeah! Mushroom forest! Look at this enviro art with AQ. <laughs> oh man. Yep, so this is uh, this is new new Mario World, it just announced at E3. So there you go. There you go. Toad IRL, yeah. So, like anything, you know that you can apply it invert as well if you really want. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. If you turn down the Z intensity, maybe get a more interesting result. Yeah, so that actually almost looks like little little bullet wounds. I really like that. So this, like, if you turn the Z intensity down, you can start getting some interesting looking patterns as well. To be honest, like, I feel like this sort of a thing like vdms like alphas have their place but i just feel like i'm going to be using vdms so much more now compared to just in, in comparison to uh using alphas everywhere just because like look at this overhang look at this that you 
Look at how awesome that is! And it just, like, it comes right off the mesh. Like, that's amazing! You can have little tiny ones with, like, a less, like, lesser Z intensity as well. Like, that's so cool! It's really, really cool. Yeah, so for me personally, I'm going to be making a whole bunch of VDMs that I'm going to be using for uh, skin textures and stuff like that. And uh, I'm just going to be using that mostly co in comparison to alphas. I just feel like it's it's going to be so much better. Yeah, they're really great. It is a, it's a new tool in ZBrush, yes. It's called VDM, so Vector Displace Displacement Mesh. This literal entire stream has been about VDM and playing around with VDM and learning VDM. <laughs> so we've been very flailfish, but we ended up getting uh, these out. So let, let's, let's make like a quick thing. We can probably do like one more VDM before I have to go. So I'm going to make like a... I'm going to kill this. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to save the brush first. Bling! Yes. Okay. Yeah, man, like... Well, I mean, 4 8 literally just released, so... I think everybody's in the learning mode. So this is this is part, this is the this is what we did on stream so far. Hold on, let's get this uh, Z intensity up. So we got some some of these horn teeth things, which are pretty cool, pretty sick. And then we got some crab claws. Which I don't really know why you would want to use a crab claw, but it's here. <laughs> you can use it. And uh, we got we got some we got the suckers. So we got these. Whoops. Oh no. And you can use them in inverse as well to make them look like buttons, I guess, if you want. And then we've got mushrooms, which ended up looking like this. So that's what we that's what we accomplished. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I made all of these. I'm gonna, they're they're going to be available to you guys. Uh, the full brush pack is uh, some of the other stuff that I had done as well. You can have them as well. They're 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 like really quick ones, but it involves like a few a few scales um, that I did during the beta. So they like I was still figuring out the brush. So you can see like this is going to require like your like smoothing on your part if you use that one, but it's there. Um, and then there is also these other scales, which are a little bit more successful in terms of uh, using. But uh, in order to use the scale brushes though, because these are pulling from the mesh underneath, I would recommend going with the overhang in the opposite direction from where you're pulling in, just like I am doing right now. Otherwise, like if you want to pull it from underneath, you're going to get this, right? So you're going to want to try and pull in the other direction. And then we've also got just these Generos right here, without any, without any uh, stuff underneath. Parasect, yeah. <laughs> in the chisel rects? What's the difference in the chisel rectangle? Oh, oh, you mean like, um, so if you take chisel rectangle, take chisel rectangle is all of these brushes, like all of these VDMs that uh, Pixelogic has provided for you. So if you take these from Chisel Rectangle, this isn't mine, this is from Pixelogic, and you pull it out, then you, you're gonna see that you get a lot of uh, a lot of hard surface, like gears and rivets and stuff. So that's um, Chisel Rectangle, and then they also have the Chisel Creature as a default, so you have like, you know, your, you, they have scales as well. And they have like horns that you can pull out and use and other kind of like scale stuff as well. So there's lots of that ears and eyes and noses and things. 
Um, and then there's Chisel, uh, Chisel 3D, which is like the same thing, but like more, more of like the noses and stuff like that. And then there's like actual chisel. An actual chisel is what you're gonna want to do. Like what you're on it. What the bleh. What you're gonna want to use if you're making a VDM brush from scratch. So let's say I wanted to append this to a new brush. I would take the chisel brush and then I would put this in it and then I would delete the other things or whatever and save it out as a new brush. That's how I would do it. Just don't save over the actual chis chisel brush. Save it as a new one. Uh, can you import custom shapes from third-party software? Um, I don't think that that's, like, if you project the details onto the mesh, like, onto the, onto the square, then yes, but you have to keep it a square, you have to use the, uh, subdivision levels. How much polygon does that spear have to get that displacement? So this this one this one has a lot. Like this one, because these mushrooms are really detailed, I needed to pump up this spear to eight million. Um, but but for something like these uh, teeth, you don't need nearly as much real estate. So if I had this spear and I just go up to five hundred and twenty and we grab that brush again and we use like one of the plain kind of things you can see it doesn't actually need that kind of real estate in order to show up same with like this tooth like you you know it works as well like you might not get all of the detail but you can still get a general idea of what it is that you sculpted but if you want like literally all the detail you're gonna want to get you know real estate in there Draw them out? No, wait, wait, sorry. Why don't they have the square boundary? Um, because, okay, yeah, so that's part of like how to create the VDM. So you need to preserve, you can see how I've masked it off. It doesn't have the square boundary because it they were made on the center of this mesh. And this is like kept to a square. Actually, you can see here, this came up a little bit. And that's actually really interesting because I will show you what that looks like when you pull it out of the mesh. You can see, you can see on these right here that this is giving that little bit of a bump right there because, because it has been moved a bit in that area right here. So you get a bump when you pull it out. That's why you need to keep these 100% straight. All right, 14 more minutes. Let's see, what can I what can I make in 14 minutes? What can I make in 14 minutes? Blah, 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 blah. Or maybe we should like, I don't know. What should I make in 14 minutes? Come on, Ooh. give me something quick. Give me something quick. You want, you want, it, you want me to make blah, 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 blah. All right, let's, uh. Ooh, my voice. I am not going to be able to speak tomorrow. Oh, right. I was going to... Okay, sorry. I know I asked you guys this, but I, I think I was going to create a... Uh, yeah, like a, a disgusting growth or something. So I was going to do that. That's a, that's a good one. All right. This one I'm not going to use. I'm going to actually sculpt inwards first. So I'm going to use it in the, uh, the, other, the other way that you normally would. I'm gonna mask every- whoops, mask all of the other stuff off. Pizza, alien egg. Oh, all good ideas, all really good ideas. Guys, I hope- I hope that you guys are gonna make that kind of stuff. That'll be so cool. And then from this, I'm gonna actually shift D to use it lower sub D. I'm wondering if maybe, did I do this on the wrong side again? 
I think I did it on the wrong side again. No, I, I don't. No, I didn't. I'll do it this way. You can do some like nasty growth like this. Also, if you guys want to see more on 4R8 and the other features that it has to offer, definitely give ZBrush a follow here and tune in to the other artists who are going to be using uh, the tools all throughout this week and next week, etc, etc. And they will be able to teach you a whole lot more and like experiment with you a whole bunch more and play around with the tools and it'll be a lot of fun. So definitely give them a follow see if you have any interest in following me after my massive fumble of this entire stream. I swear I'm a professional. Um, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you can feel free to uh, follow me as well on my Twitch channel or social medias or whatevs you want to Um, I'll have it up at the end of stream. Like I'll be, I'll make a a tweet about it. Okay, I'll upload it to Google Drives and I will tweet the link after the stream is done, and I'll keep it up there for you guys for a couple of days, and then I will be removing it because I don't have a mi like infinite space on my Google Drive, so I always have to like remove stuff that I offer, unless I put it on Gumroad. I could put it on Gumroad, but we'll see. I might put it on Gumroad. <laughs> Oops. Actually, try... Can I try... How's this working? No. Can I do it this way? Maybe? No. That doesn't work. Okay, whatever. Thank you, Link. <laughs> Reggie. That gizmo! Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to get dive more into that in uh, ne next week will be a little bit more smooth because I'll have the opportunity to <laughs> have really like readjusted with 4R8. Um, I was I was like diving into cold water tonight. <laughs> Hell yes. This is kind of like a, I guess, like skin that has been uh, ripped open for this thing. This nasty, nasty thing. gonna be some hella nasty growth I don't even know it's like make a uh, make like a, a hair coming out of this this is gonna be so gross 
people watching this on YouTube later, oh my god, they're gonna be like, D actually, you guys are probably like, what are you doing? I'm making a hair come out of the growth. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Oh god, get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Just like puking faces. Oh man. <laughs> Yes, it needs to be on a square plane. It needs to be made out of quads. I would recommend you go into the light box, go into project, click on miscellaneous, go to this right here and use that as your template. You guys are like, oh, dude, I'm so good at art direct this pustule. Oh, <laughs> let's make it super gross. Oh, man. We only have like five more minutes, though. So I'm going to try and get this, get this one in on time. So this is this is what I like ultimately like what I think this uh, this stuff is gonna be really good for like not necessarily like crab claws or something like I mean like, you could totally totally use like crab claws for it but I think I think the real bread and butter of the VDM is just getting like really amazing textures and uh, and uh, and like feelings like you know depth onto your characters and environments really really fast I think that's that's the that's its real uh, plus here. I'm gonna grab the um, chisel a cubed. Let's grab this texture right here. Put it on a spray. Oh, nasty. Gross. I think this needs to be tinier for it to actually feel like it's like a hair. <laughs> Almost done. And uh, maybe put that up some more, put it on another spray. I really like- this is like gross. <laughs> VDM hold polypaint info. No, no it does not. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that around the edges. I'm gonna have to take this now, because we only have a few more minutes. I'm just gonna quickly inflate some of this stuff to really try and like push that home like that nasty Ugh. gross 
Okay, and then you want to make sure that these sides right here are all 110% E straight. So in order to do that, like I said a million times already, let's morph it to the grid. Boom, bang, morph to the grid, and then shift D, go down some subdivision levels, start smoothing this stuff out right here. Make sure that you've got it all nice and smooth. Go up the sub D, smoothing that out a bit. Do, 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 do. All right, we're almost done. And uh, guys, yeah, if you haven't given Pixelogic a follow, please give them a follow. I think tomorrow, because it normally is, is Timothy Rap is tomorrow. I'm going to check real quick. Who do we got tomorrow? Who do we got tomorrow? Who, who, who? We have... Brendan tomorrow! Brendan's going to be tomorrow and Timothy Rap, so they will also be playing with the 4R8 tools. And I'm sure they are going to be experimenting a whole bunch as well. So let them know what you think of ZBrush. Give them your love. Ask them your questions, etc., etc. All right. Get it, get it, get it, get it. I went up a few sub, like a, quite a few sub Ds, so I'm just, oh, we're at time. Okay, we're gonna finish this one up really quick. All right, that's at the max. All right, so now we're gonna take this one to my brush. Brush, 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 brush. We're gonna rename this one real quick. Rename it Pustule 01. I'm going to quickly save it. And in your brush, from mesh. Alright, let's test. Let's test it. Oh, nope, that's spray. There it is. There's the pustule. There it is, guys. That's the pustule right there. So we've gotten fast at making these brushes, like you just saw, it was 15, like not even 15 minutes, that was like a 10 minute, 10 minute brush and now you have like this nasty, nasty thing that you can just like put around everywhere. So that's dope. And uh, yeah, like anything, you can invert it and hey, look at that, you can actually get some like cool sucker looking things, so. There you go, that's what we did today. If you liked what you saw, come and hang out on my channel. I stream every Tuesdays, and if you liked what you saw again, definitely watch this channel because there's gonna be a lot more informative videos rather than just experimentation where you can learn a lot of stuff and all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, welcome to 4R8. I hope you guys all have a really great time experimenting and having a lot of fun with the program. Um, check out Z Classroom and check out Michael Pavlovich for some really good tutorials that have come out now. Uh, I will be seeing you guys next week with uh, Creature Sculpt, not not this, not experimenting. I wanted to kind of like ease into it a little bit today um, because I wasn't, you know, 100% ready to jump into everything. Anyways, um, we will be doing creature sculpting again next week and I hope you enjoyed this. This will be up for download. Follow the Twitter, follow my Twitter in order to get the link. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll see you. Check out Brendan tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.